My book Honest Bonds is now available for purchase on Amazon. Also, Manga Writer has created a webcomic called Shadows. If you haven't seen it yet, be sure to check out the link in the description. All right, and here we are discussing the Mario movie. It's, well, it was so, sort of expected, wasn't it? Who is here with me today? Uh, we're all the little voices inside his head, so um, it's going to be a very weird episode of uh, reviewing the Mario film. So if you don't hear us, then uh, you know why. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, we so we're here discussing the 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 Mario film. This this is technically a part three, because part one was the f the first Sonic film with me and System. Part two was the Sonic uh, the second Sonic film with me, uh, System, and um, Eddie, and now Manga Writer's with us. <laughs> Hello. Because you wanted I'm to be now. You, you wanted to be in on this one, didn't you? <laughs> yes, I did. I wanted to uh, get involved in the arguments, so that'll be fun. Oh yes. But I feel like we've chose the wrong film because we, I feel like we all collectively agree. I feel like we all collectively okay. agree that this film is eh. Okay, right. Okay, okay, okay. Before we get into that, before we get into that, let's cover some ground rules. We are going to be covering spoilers in this video. So if you haven't seen the Mario film yet, by some luck you haven't seen the Mario film yet, we are discussing spoilers. So for now, let's get our spoiler-free reviews out of the way quickly uh quick and simple i'll start the film is mid this film is aggressively mid after he gets to mushroom kingdom before that it was actually kind of engaging um you know those like cutscene compilations you get on youtube Ooh, where like yeah. they play all the cutscenes between the <laughs> yeah. video like they yeah. play all the video game cutscenes and like there's obvious like breaks where gameplay would like fill in the rest <laughs> of the story adding the That's occasional <laughs> boss fight here and there that's what this film feels like. Yep. Okay. So we're all we're all in agreement. This is mid, which is surprising because this mid. film this film had a lot of hype to it. Because oh yeah, I think it was like what 2017, 2018 that the yep. film was announced. Well, it's been a while. Yeah. It was announced that um, so when there was a Super Nin so this is when Nintendo announced that Super Nintendo Land was going to be a f in Universal theme parks. It was pretty right. much like the film was announced like a few days later, if not a few weeks. Now, what were your guys' initial reactions to the fact Illumination were making this film? This film was going to be shit. Fuck. I was terrified. See, I'm amazed that I'm amazed you got. I had hopes for it because I genuinely. Why? I ge let me finish. I genuinely thought that <laughs> Illumination were the perfect studio to make the film. Their art style worked for Mario, and I knew that Nintendo were going to keep their fucking eyes on this like hawks. Because I knew they weren't going to make the same mistake twice. Yeah, and it's also the case that Illumination films are usually very shit at storytelling, so them combined with Nintendo was honestly a perfect match <laughs> made in heaven. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. So, but yes. Yes, we're getting the spicy takes out here. If you don't like it, leave. <laughs> so, the, so the film was announced then, and it, it was quiet for a while. I think the only time we heard news was after COVID and lockdown happened, Nintendo said the film is still happening. Like, despite, despite um, isolation restrictions, they were still making the film. So, you know, it was still happening. Don't worry. It's not cancelled. That is the beauty of animated... That, that is, like, the beauty of animated films. It doesn't... Whether it's COVID or not, animated films can still be made. Yes. But then we got the cast announcement. <laughs> Chris Pratt as Mario was the longest meme for a while. Oh, yeah. Even the picture of him that they used didn't help at all. It looked like an obituary. <laughs> yeah, I saw it was that a tweet. Mug shot. <laughs> it was just a fucking. He was the only one in black and white for some reason. <laughs> you know what else didn't help when they started getting the, the actors in for like that one Nintendo Direct and Anya Taylor Joy looked like she was recording it in a public bathroom. Anya Taylor Joy looked like she didn't want to be there because she. It, like she forgot she was making the Mario film and Chris Pratt clearly didn't know what a Super Mario or a brother was. <laughs> For a long time, I grew up, I was playing, I was stomping... Koopas! Koopas! <laughs> <laughs> Fucking saying Koopa like it was a slur yeah. or something. It's like, alright, Chris, calm down, please. But then Don't after say Koopa with the hard R, please. <laughs> hard K. <laughs> No, but, no shit. But then the uh, but then the film the film got delayed. He's had a September uh, sorry a December release last year. Then it got delayed to it got delayed to spring, and everyone thought June. But then it came out um, last week, uh, which which was an interesting time, and um, and we've all seen it. Um, so I think we should um, okay right. 
Should we get the positives out of the way first? <laughs> I've got a positive. Yes, go ahead. I think I think, I think Mario's family look like they were designed by Ken Penders. <laughs> ah, His... Kendleton Pendleton. Wait, why? That was wait, hold on, hold, 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 Why is that a fucking positive? <laughs> Because I want them to keep coming back and getting more and more screen time. It's funny to me. <laughs> you know, the thing is, this is going to be on my channel, so I'm not censoring his name out. So you're publicly going to be quoted as saying his name. That's okay. If you summon Voldemort to your channel, that's not my problem. <laughs> but, um, okay, so um, my positive is um, I like the interactions between Mario and Luigi, uh, which I'll go into more detail later, but it did feel real between them. Oh yeah, their relationship was the first part of the movie to me. Yeah, I would say that like, in terms of like, the Super Mario Brothers movie, whenever the brothers were together on screen, that was where the film was actually surprisingly endearing. Yeah. It was very nice. And like, uh, and, like it, it it definitely worked to, to his advantage in some cases, but you know, like I said, we'll get to that later. Um, yeah. Ed, Eddie, any positives you want to cover that isn't the animation and the music? I wouldn't even say the music's that good. <laughs> I don't know, I like Take On Me. It looks good. <laughs> my Take On Me. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, that is, that is my first... I need a hero? Now that shit fucking slaps. <laughs> never, heard that, never heard that song in my entire life. Where can I get that on an album? Thunderstruck is my favorite Mario song, I'm just saying. <laughs> Honestly, right? So, yeah, my, my, my first note is the soundtrack confirms that the licensed music is an afterthought. Because, uh, yeah, there is licensed... It feels like it. No, it, it, it is. Like, um, the... The soundtrack came out. Um, yeah. I think like a, a few. No, it was it was, it was like the day after, and there are songs on it that is clearly not in the film because that's where the license music plays. Namely, yeah. when Mario is doing the obstacle course and they're touring around Kong Kingdom, those tracks that mm -hmm. they replace, which I I play to you, Eddie. I can't remember if you were that system, but I play to you, Eddie, yeah. and I, I think you agree that they're really fucking good tracks. I like the Donkey Kong one. It was a bit too triumphant for what was actually happening, but it was really good. I liked it. It, it, it. Oh, it was good. It's just that is way too hard. That was way too like big for what was happening. Like the guy was just go karting. It didn't need to be that grandiose, but it was really good. Yeah. Um. But uh. Yeah. So so let's go with the start of the film. You know, we gotta we're, we're gonna do this in in chronological. You know, we got. I like how you didn't even ask what my positives were, and you didn't even ask fucking system what his positives of the film were. <laughs> oh, I was the first one he asked. I was the first one he asked. You you said oh, okay, them. Sorry. Like 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 hey, like passed, you said yours. So, this. so I assumed that you answered it. <laughs> well, I, I have another positive. Okay, then the let's film. hear your other positive then. It ended. Voice acting was fucking it solid. Ended. <laughs> But yeah, okay, yes, yeah. the film ended as well. That was a good positive as well. But like, yeah, voice acting is actually like surprisingly really good. My highlights with the voice acting is definitely Charlie Day as Luigi and Jack Black's Bowser. Well, actually, Keegan Michael Key I think did a better job as Toad than Jack Black did as Bowser, purely because some of the parts of Bowser I hated. Oh, Bowser's got problems. I cannot imagine the entire the entire movie Toad being. Let's go, Mario! <laughs> I mean, I can. The 90-year-old chain-smoking grandma voice? Immediately. All right, all right. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, should we should we, should we we start with the story? Um, should we think should we do like a general recommendation just before we close out to the spoiler? Oh yeah, let's do the Red Letter Media thing and say if we recommend it or not before we get into spoilers. I mean, if you're a fan of the games, then sure. But if you want a good film, right. then no. Yeah, if you like having keys jangled in your face, if you like member berries, go ahead, watch the movie, you'll enjoy it, trust me. Basically, yeah. Uh, Jack, you? Eddie? Yeah, you? Uh, play, play a Mario game. <laughs> at, least you can, at least you can have some gameplay between the cutscenes. <laughs> so what you're saying is, when, when watching the film, you should have like a Switch or a DS in hand. No, no, oh, what you do, like right? Oh, like the Subway Surfers TikTok? Oh, fuck uh, off. Oh, God, Here's what you do. Here's what you do, right? You play Mario Odyssey for 25 minutes, then you play Mario Kart for an hour, and then you play Mario Odyssey again for the last, like, 10 minutes. <laughs> well, no, you're doing, you're doing a little bit of Smash Brothers I I in between it. Oh, yeah, take a Smash Brothers break and play with your brother. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, proceed with uh, the, the starting of the film. Yeah. So, you know, right. at, at the start, we get, we get you know, the logos and stuff. The logo is where, I think I said to you, System, that is the only time I think there'll be a minion in this film. You did, you did say that. Yeah, and I, I was, was like, right. wow, he's right. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm, I'm disappointed there was no 8-bit Universal logo like they did with Scott Pilgrim. Mm. Yeah. That would have been a really good opportunity. 
I don't think I don't think Nintendo would have done that. Well, I mean, Nintendo would have done it. That would be Universal's choice. I'm just surprised they didn't do it. I remember when I was watching it in the far corner of the cinema. Once the like noises from the lights came on, some kid in the corner screamed, "That's from Mario Kart!" And I'm like, "Yeah, he's in a go kart. Of course, it's from Mario Kart." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the fucking little groom system just picked on kids before while we were while they was fucking watching the film. It's like, okay, dude, Jesus, all right. Oh, I wanted to. They would not shut the hell up. Every little kid under the age of like seven would not shut the hell up. I couldn't <laughs> hear anybody in my theater. Yeah, the kid in my first viewing, the kids were very quiet. In the second every viewing, so, yeah. they were noisy as fuck. Um, every yeah, like every uh, so often, there'd be a kid in the back just you know screaming a reference and stuff until eventually the parent just went stop or we're leaving. Duh, dude! In the fucking second viewing, there was a domestic happening behind me when the adverts were going. Oh my, oh god, my god, that sounds so much more interesting than the movie. I was genuinely because like because you know there was like an advert for the for the fucking Kia Sportage happening and, and, and I was just hearing I was hearing a woman going, I fucking hate you. I can't believe you're doing this right now. How the fuck? Why we are watching a film with our son? Are you doing this right now? I'm just like. Well, <laughs> well, I know where I'm fucking eating my popcorn in direction. Yeah, I'm goddamn okay. Right. Right. A shit. Oh, so real quick. Oh, I just uh, I tweeted that out. They're like, "Whoops!" He's like, "There's a domestic going on," and I was like, "Yeah, I'm just gonna leave that ambiguous while I'm watching this film." <laughs> but, um, yeah, I'm not sure if you're gonna keep any of this part of the podcast in, but uh, yeah, we'll continue on with the plot. Yeah, go for it. Um, then we got the um. Then we had like an interesting Nintendo logo, which if they're gonna do that for like their future projects, where like maybe like a sprite of the character the film is about is happening, I'm all for it because that's honestly quite cool. I think it's gonna be like Marvel, where they start off with the one we saw here, and then as the movies get more and more like popular and bigger, they're gonna change it and make it more grandiose and stuff. You think maybe they'll add more characters to the logo? <laughs> yeah, ten years from now, it's gonna be a massive like city-sized Nintendo logo that the camera slowly pans through with like holograms all over it. And the only reason that everybody's going to remember the IP is that they played Smash Brothers, not the actual IP. <laughs> so basically, basically, what they did with the Sega logo. For the it's Sonic like, oh no. my god, it's Link from Smash Brothers. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's more, Metroid uh, from Smash it's, Brothers. It's Captain Falcon and Fox from Smash Brothers. <laughs> Someone, someone's gonna die a little inside if they hear that in the cinema, aren't they? Yeah, I just did when I said it. <laughs> but, um... That'd be the equivalent of, is that Sonic.exe? Oh, that was oh. so funny. Oh, don't remember There are that. kids who don't know who Shadow is. Oh, I, I am all for this absolute chaos. What Fire Blue game is he from? <laughs> Um, so the film starts, and basically we got the first trailer, uh, as the first scene. Um, something that a lot of people expected. Um, the slight difference is the music was different. I kind of prefer how the music was used in the trailer, with the overdramatic drum beats and stuff. Um, it, it felt a bit more at stake, uh, instead of fucking Kill Bill playing randomly in the middle there. Um... But yeah, Bowser lands. Uh, also, for all the references in this film, all of the references, the Ice Palace is the only original thing, which surprised me. They, like, they couldn't reference Cool Cool Mountain, at least, because that, you know, it's got the penguins there. Just make him melt a mountain instead. Yeah, why not? Fuck it. Yeah, melt a mountain. Mountain's worth I also noticed castle. that in the soundtrack, there was. Um a slight nod to the airship theme from Super Mario Brothers 3. Honestly, I that was pretty cool. I didn't mind that because that was like that that felt natural the way it was put in there. Oh yeah, like, it was I, I will say the soundtrack is really really good. Oh, it's fantastic. All complaints on the soundtrack. The soundtrack absolutely cooked. I know I said a few minutes ago I didn't think the music's that good. I was talking about the licensed songs, by the way. Yeah, uh Brian the license. Brian Tyler did a <laughs> I'm fantastic I'm not contradicting I'm not contradicting myself, so shh. <laughs> good save, good save, good save. Um, yes, thank you. But yeah, so uh, the penguins attack. Uh, they, 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 they fuck up. A slight little thing that was in the film that was in the trailer that I honestly found a bit funny was like the large snowball was going for Kamek, but he teleported away and hit a Cooper. Yeah, that was funny. I saw, I saw that, that that was a little bit funny. Um, and this, when Bowser starts melting the palace, it's where my theory of maybe something else was planned comes into light because it look like it, it zooms in on like Kamek's face and like it does the whole like like you see the evil reflected in their eyes as they look at the thing in joy and I'm seeing like was Kamek maybe planned to be the true evil or something like maybe someone who is encouraging Bowser's antics 
Nah, I highly doubt that. Well, the thing is, Kamek has canonically been, like, Bowser's guardian since he was a child. I understand that, but, like, this is, again, this is an Illumination film in combination with Nintendo. They were not going to do anything as thematically deep as that. I mean, fair enough, fair enough, but, uh, but yeah, that's... In any, other, in any other studio, maybe, yeah, sure, but with Illumination, pfft, no. It's yeah. like, the way he's pushing Bowser later it does make it feel like there could have been something there, like, if Bowser and Peach got together and then caused some kind yeah. of magical kind of catastrophe that he, like, took advantage of, that would have been cool, but no, that's not this movie. I will also say that, like, um, the opening scene, despite, like, um, you know... This was before I was able to see all the flaws later on. Bowser was legitimately intimidating. Yes. I found him to actually be, like, yeah. his, his dramatic intro, like, um, when he, his response to, like, do you yield is just a simple, I do not. I do not. You I know? love that line. Like, it's, it's, it's like, yeah, a, genuinely, like, a, like a yeah, it's a really, really good scene. And, uh, yeah. he's, like, Jack Black just absolutely sells it as Bowser in that scene. He's absolutely incredible. Yeah. So... If the film just had like this kind of Bowser, I would have loved it, but unfortunately, <laughs> it gets worse. We'll reveal as we will reveal as we keep going. Yeah, Let so moderate Bowser. So like, um, <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> so um, <laughs> oh, oh god, I almost choked. <laughs> You're right there, Eddie. Yeah, don't die, yeah. Eddie. Don't die in the middle of a podcast. Jesus. But anyway, so um, so right after he gets the star, when he said, "Now no one will stop me," like everyone thought, cuts to hard cuts to the Mario Brothers. Um, I liked that. Trailer. That was funny. I liked it. Um, That's cute. It's I love I love the little homage, um, the sort of like '90s vibe they had going with it. You know, that's all. They fine had like the and bad good. green screen between like Mario and Luigi. That was really cool. The yeah, they got the, they got the OG. So they yeah. fly. They got like the OG voice actress from like the the Super Mario Brothers Super Show to like. That badly read awesome. a line to go like you drained my wallet what the, what the fuck yes it seems like the and, only thing you haven't yeah. drained is my bank account and like chris pratt and charles day doing the italian voices really good very good actually really good though i don't like how they just forced the charles martinet cameo there yeah it was okay so yeah because like quickly late because like uh later like once the um the commercial's over. Um, Mario and Luigi basically like, yeah, that was a cool commercial. And obviously, because modern films have to be modern films, they have to go, mm, the Italian accents, was it too much? It's like, fuck you, movie. Yeah, and, and, and Charles Martinet is literally there, Mario, going, it's a perfect, wahoo, does the jump and everything, and then goes back to playing the jump man oh, on game that machine. was so cringy, I'm sorry. Like, it just goes back to it like it never happened. Yeah. Yeah, it's he's a. Uh, it's obviously just like an homage to uh, Jumpman. Well, so, also like, you know, he was there. He was playing in Donkey name. Kong as well. But he was playing yeah. the game he's from. What I also found funny. Jumpman. What I also found funny is that he was playing the arcade game whilst the whilst the advert was playing and whilst Mario Luigi questioned the accent. So he didn't even watch it. He just turned around and went, "Yeah, it's good," and then went back to playing the arcade game. He probably wasn't even paying yeah, attention. And to bring up something that System just like briefly mentioned is that yes, he's playing a game that. Is about him, so it's like okay, great. So, what? Charles, Mar Charles Martin he plays one character, and he's a fucking narcissist. It's like Krusty buying Krustios. <laughs> I guess, yeah. <laughs> oh god, I almost swallowed some of the juice. <laughs> but then, um, but then we see Spike. Now, when Spike was sort of like leaked, because the guy who played him announced that he was playing Spike way before we knew who was who in the film. And right. I thought he was going to have a, bit, a bigger impact, but no, he yeah. was just there for a moment. Yeah, he's just there for another quick little reference and to be like Mario's he's foil just, uh, to like I'm show big off his. Bag, but I'm big bag bully. Yeah, to sh to just like kick Mario's character arc off, going like you're small, you're nothing. And it's like, yay! I can't wait for the film to not go through with this. <laughs> like I honestly, because um, even on the website that they did, smbplumbing.com. They you know, like like Spike left a one star review saying about how like they left his company and I would have loved to have seen more of what they were as builders before when they left the company. Yeah, yeah. Like, like 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 before they became plumbers and why he's so bitter that they left because normally it didn't have to be like a whole song and dance like maybe like one of those quick montage things of them like going in it's a good time but then it's like something goes on. 
but then it just flash forwards. Yeah, yeah, it could just be like a quick one, like a one, one, like one. <laughs> can't fucking speak English right now. It could be like um, a one-to-one -one conversation between Mario and Luigi, and the, like after the after the advert plays That's with the plumbing and stuff. It's like, man, we are so much better at that than building, huh, Mario? It's like, oh yeah, you fucking know it. <laughs> or maybe even, or maybe even like a moment because when Spike leaves, he leaves a tip. Like you see him leave like a like like a few dollars tip, and like like maybe a line where like Mario said, you know, oh, if only he he was as good of a boss as he was as good of a tipper, you know, which could have implied that you know there was poor employment. But no, like there was the bad blood between them, yeah. But now nah, Spike is just a bully who just you know hates Mario for reasons. Yeah, for whatever fucking reason. He's Biff from Back to the Future. If Biff had two scenes. <laughs> but um, I also, um, it's also in that scene where we see Mario stand up for Luigi. Even at name calling, Mario is like, yeah, nah, mate, which I love. I appreciate Mario like standing up to people who are like three times his size. It's endearing. Yeah, like he's not scared because he, because he protects his brother. And I do appreciate that. And it's a good bit of foreshadowing for Bowser because he's also like five times bigger than Mario. It's all yeah. intentional. Um, also, uh, uh, a small thing I noticed, I like how Mario calls Luigi Lou. Uh, I don't know why. I, yeah, just, yeah. I, I just love that, you know, cute brother nickname. We all, like, we, we've always done that a couple times. Um, yeah. So then they get a call for their first job. Um, and we get an obligatory side-scroller moment. Which yeah, that was so weird. Oh, I, I, I got lost like twice as it was, was going on. Much. There was too much I think stuff half of it was because my seat was like to like the front, most frontest, rightest part of the theater. <laughs> it was the corner. Yeah, That's that was the dumbass best fault. I, 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 I was, get, I was getting middle. Fault. I was getting middle when I can. It was the only seat that was available. From my seat, I was able to like see a lot of the stuff that was going on. But like, yeah, they definitely just overplayed the side-scrolling part, and it's like, people go, oh, but it's like this in the games. Like, I don't give a shit if it's like this in the games. It doesn't translate well into a movie. Thing is, it is nicely choreographed. Animated. Like how... You know what it reminds me of? Yeah. What was that? You ever seen the, the original Doom movie? No. There's oh, a yeah. Scene I know what you're talking that... about, yeah. Yeah, Jack knows, Jack knows. There's a scene in mm -hmm. that movie where, for no reason whatsoever, it just goes from being like a normal movie to being a first-person shooter for like three minutes. And it's super yeah. jarring, and it doesn't match. match it's like, get oh. it? It's a Doom movie. We're going to do a first person shoot it. Does it have, like, the gun dead center in the middle yeah. as well? Yeah, it yeah. does, yeah. Oh, wow. God. They really commit, they commit to the bit. You're going to have to show it's... me that later, because I'm really curious about that. Um, oh, sure. It, it literally just it reminds me of that, where it just doesn't fit in with the rest of the movie, and it's hard to watch. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, uh, like that, that's how I scroll a moment. It, despite it weirdly out of place, it... it it's nicely choreographed about like how Mario's doing his thing and he's and he's placing stuff down for Luigi to cross. Like he 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 lowers a ladder, puts down a door, you know, stuff like that. And I I like that. I like how Mario is just so eccentric that like he will he will see an open gate and just not open the gate. He'll just jump over it. No, it's like it's, it's like, like why Mario? What it's the fucking fuck? it's fucking Johnny English reborn. Um, yeah, the, exactly. The yeah. On the yeah, it does give, yeah, it does give out those vibes when you yeah. say that. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and then it ends on the fucking flagpole at a restaurant. I think like a restaurant or a cafe called Castle Restaurant at the end. Did you get it? No. Um, but they go to their house. This house that just sticks out in the middle, like, you know, random. That felt like they went to a different movie. <laughs> random New York apartment block, random New York apartment block, big fucking house there. Um, yeah. With, which is where they, um, you know, that they're, they're confident that everything's going to be fine. Um, then they then they meet the dog. The woman says that the dog loves them, even though she like she really goes to the dog and said, "Ah, oh, he likes you." The dog didn't even know they were there for a moment. Um, but the dog looks very like it, like they just got a model from Secret Life of Pets and put it in the Mario yeah, film. Yeah, hundred percent. I was about to say that, and yeah. like, obviously, you know, obligatory uh, conniving dog. dog is going to be the main cause of the further conflict literally a minute later the moment the stuff with the dog is very unneeded it's very unneeded because they made mario and luigi competent if that yeah because like i feel the whole fiasco like all the flooding could have been prevented like you know like not have the dog do it but have like you know maybe mario screwed something too tight 
or like um, yeah it's like it's literally the the only reason why everything went wrong was because the dog was in the way if the dog just stayed out of it they would have done a perfectly good job which the dog only attacks because luigi broke his bone by accident <laughs> he stepped on it I mean, at that point if you're chewing on it for that long how would it not go in half of that long I was expecting the dog to be a Bowser minion in disguise or something. That would have been weird. That would have been very fucking weird. That would have been really stupid, but and I would not... not have liked that whatsoever. No, I would but let's not. not forget, though, but Mario 3 does establish that people can be turned into animals. So that I don't work. care what Mario 3 has I... established. <laughs> this film establishes nothing. I'm judging yeah. it on its own merits, and it's so I'm far. I'm just saying, like, at that time when I was watching the movie, I was expecting that dog to be a Bowser minion in disguise, like spying on the human world. <laughs> Just going to put this right now. If anybody puts I, off the I defense, if anybody does the defense of, oh, but in the games, I'm going to shoot you on sight. <laughs> um, no, I'm just saying that because it's so early in the movie, I was expecting Bowser to be sending out minions in disguise because of that dog, because it seemed like a, a super evil minion in disguise. That's what I was thinking until it was just confirmed to be a normal again, yeah, again, again, system, this is an Illumination movie. It's so not that clever. <laughs> let's move on from I, I systems audition to game theory. Um, yeah. Film theory. Also CinemaSins as well. So also, yeah, CinemaSins. Um, oh god, I hate CinemaSins. Fuck so, that place. You're, being, you're acting a lot like them for this film, I'll say that much. I, I'm just saying, that's what I thought it was going to be, but it wasn't. When we, when we, so after that, they, they fix the problem and leave a huge mess. Um, yeah. And they go back and we see Mario's very Illumination-esque family. <laughs> um, they got the they got the certain part of like you know Italian families right. They always have like really big families. True. So. I I That's okay. Cool. Also, I swear Charles Martinet voices the dad. Because if he does, I didn't hear it. He sounds especially at the end of the film. He sounds just a little bit like when he voiced Magenta and Dragon Ball Super Superhero. Like that could have just yeah. been me. Um, but like, uh, cut up his voice out to hear on screen. All right, we're gonna talk about this shit. Gloveless Mario. Very fucking cursed. <laughs> Not really. I mean, it was about as what I expected. I mean, they did the same thing with Odyssey. It's their, their hands. What else do you want? Yes, I know, but the point is he wore the gloves when he wore the overalls. Also, I just looked it up. Charles Martinet is the voice of the dad, and his dad's name is Giuseppe, because of course it is. He is the voice of the dad. Yep. I fucking knew it. There you go. Ha! And his name is Giuseppe because he's the time. Giuseppe. I also like, um, again, there's another joke in the film where like a sibling looks over to Mario going like, the white gloves, really? Why are you doing this with plumbers? It's like, can we stop? Can we stop? Please stop. You're not cute. Just, please just embrace it. Just let it be a thing. Don't make, don't point it out. Just let it be a thing. Yeah, literally. <laughs> How are gloves a trademark? They're fucking gloves. You mean to tell me that plumbers don't use gloves for their jobs? That sounds like an absolute, like, biological hazard. You know what that reminds me of when they said that? That reminded me of that scene in Star Wars, Han Solo, where the guy names Han Solo with the last name. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> honestly. It can't just be his name. He has to come up with an origin yeah. for his surname. Honestly, the only thing, uh, you, you, you say Han Solo, but I'm just reminded of the bit where, where he just plainly goes like, hey. I made the Kessel Run. I made the Kessel oh, Run. There's also, like, um, another thing that's revealed in this, like, uh, dinner party, I guess, when everyone's, like, making fun of Mario. Mario doesn't like mushrooms. Super Mario. The Mario Brothers. Super Mario doesn't like mushrooms. They're really going here. <laughs> I feel like that's a trope of some kind, where something that's established that a character uses is that they don't like yeah i swear there's a trope or something but i'm not too sure it's just subverting your expectations true it's like this is like a big thing that like really bothers me about like the discussion towards this film is that so many people who enjoy the film say like this film is like you know super loyal to the games and this film is like you know reference after reference and it's a massive love letter to the mario franchise i don't know about you but if i was to do a love letter to a certain franchise i wouldn't have mario hate fucking mushrooms that is a good point <laughs> that that's that sounds like disrespecting the source material if i say so myself to me it just feels pointless yeah, and it feels pointless exactly because like this this whole thing about him like hating mushrooms doesn't really go anywhere. It's just exactly. like a soup it's like a simple running joke that like does that doesn't even have like a punchline at it the end of it. It's not like come back. It's Kinda. not like at the end of the film where it's like, oh, I love mushrooms or anything like that. He doesn't grow to like it. Yeah, it's not like he's yeah, just it's, it's, for it one joke later now, where he's Hold on, now, hold on. It? it it does come back later. It does come back. It shows that when like he's got to eat when he's doing the the obstacle course. 
Yeah, that's and what he I'm talking keep, about. Yeah. When he has to keep eating the mushroom over and over again, it shows that he's forcing himself to eat something he hates because he say he wants to care. He wants to save his brother so much. Yeah, and but I that's the that's, thing. That's the thing. He tolerates it. Like, like it does. It, it doesn't show that he that he grows to like it. It's not like what happens in um, Wreck It Ralph, actually, um, where like oh, he, yeah, yeah. he he crashed the party and he says that he doesn't like chocolate. He goes into Sugar Rush and he's and he's in the chocolate lake and he says, "I hate chocolate." Like you know, so it's confirmed in the mind he hates chocolate. Right at the end, chocolate saves him and he loves chocolate. So you know, they, but it does know. service his character by showing that he's willing to eat something he despises to help save his brother. It helps reinforce his bravery and his. Uh, Commitment and determination and stuff. I get that, but still, it's like the whole him, the whole of him hating mushrooms is a, is like it's a build up to a joke that doesn't get a punchline. What I, and also, I just don't really like that. Why staying on the mushroom talk for just a bit longer? Because because one thing I wish they could have done is because the mushroom kingdom is another world. He eats the mushroom in that world, and it could have at least gone like, oh, this isn't that bad, or like it tastes different from the mushrooms in my world. I had thought the same one too. I was thinking like that least if they were gonna go that way. A, a good comparison, Jack. It's like Ryuk with apples. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. He says that apples in the human world taste juicy, and uh, Misa tried an apple from the Shin Megami world, and it's like eating sand. I have to take your word for it because I just I understood about half of that sentence. Fair enough. Um, <laughs> so yeah, after like um, when Mario gets made fun of, he like goes off in a he goes off like in a half, and he plays a Super Nintendo. He's playing Kid Icarus on the NES. Um, Blade they skipped the console, but it's like they skipped the game, but it's like okay, cool. He's Kid Icarus on the NES, and Mario is the nerd that has the dust cover for the cartridges. Like I saw, there were two dust covers um, on on the table with an R wing on the TV. They remembered Star Fox. <laughs> they remembered it existed. I can't wait for the two people to get that reference. Aww. <laughs> Does this mean that in that universe, Nintendo's biggest franchise is Kid Icarus now? I guess, I, yeah. I, I, wonder, Kid Icarus there, Mario. I wonder why they picked Kid Icarus of all games for Mario to play. I, Zelda would have made more sense. Ah, uh, but if they're going to do a Zelda movie in the future, that wouldn't work. They're trying to go for the super niche references, you know. No, I'm it's telling you, it's because they're going to do a Zelda movie and they don't want to confuse people, but no yeah, one's going to ask for a Kid Icarus movie. So what you're saying, a system, is that them putting Kid Icarus on the NES means like, hey, guess what we're not doing a film of? Oh, wait, yeah. there was an R-Wing there as well. Shit. Mm -hmm. Fuck. <laughs> but like, um, Mario playing like the playing Kid Icarus like, does lead to like one of my personal favorite scenes in the film, mm. where Luigi comes in like you know with Mario's dinner and stuff, and gives him a nice little talking to, going like, um, uh, he's like, you're never gonna let me down, bro. Like I'm always gonna be here for you, and uh, you know, again, like I said, Mario and Luigi when they're together. The film's like genuinely great. Yeah. If yeah. the whole oh, film yeah, just had those two together, the film would have been really good. Yep. Uh, I I one hundred percent agree with that. Um, mm -hmm. Although I just like the only criticism I have towards that is just like that just wasn't enough of it. Yes. Should have been them going on a quest together, not with Mario. Oh, it for felt like sure. Mario and Luigi games. Yeah. Can you imagine them doing like? Could you imagine them like doing the obstacle course together, like as a team? That'd be fucking sick. Oh, oh yeah, God, working together. Be amazing. Shit. Lovely. Like the whole like the, like that could just like build up on the whole thing where like um spoiler warning Peach is OP as fuck in this film but like oh, yeah. <laughs> the whole thing is that like um Princess with, Marvel with like with like Mario and Luigi like their biggest strengths are like when they're working together as a team so I feel like them doing that throughout like just the entire hour and twenty minutes would have been absolute peak but of course we don't get that. That also could have been that also could have been a good moment where like because Peach is so used to, so used to doing things solo, she doesn't think of the possibility of teamwork. Oh yeah, the power of team. Yeah, like she she could learn a very valuable lesson there. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. They they literally could have done a great job with a trope because it's believable that these two are brothers. They could have actually done that. Yeah. But no. Um. So anyway, so Mario goes to the news and Brooklyn uh, is getting flooded. Um, which honestly, uh, one of my least favorite. This is our time to shine, Luigi. It's like, why are you doing this? <laughs> one of our least favorite lines. Uh, sorry, one of my least favorite lines happens. We're like, Destiny's calling us, and Luigi's like, Destiny? You mean the girl from high school? And I'm like, oh, for fuck's sake! All right, who wrote that line? <laughs> Didn't need to know about Luigi's dating life. <laughs> yeah, I kind of it 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 just sort of gave me a mental image of just Mario and Luigi in high school in overalls with hats, surrounded by Illumination characters. <laughs> 
<laughs> fucking Gru in the background is like, you know, is plotting an evil scheme. No, Gru's a teacher. Gru's a teacher. Tommy, Tommy. <laughs> yeah. In that mental image, did their eyeballs grow in yet? good question good question let's move on we'll get to that later yeah mm -hmm. so they go so they go into um so they go to brooklyn which um uh, this shows a level of mario's competency um where where like well like he he's just like <laughs> they're not even looking in the right place and uh goes in which i i liked but i kind of wish that like you know, like, because that ties in with they're competent as plumbers, which makes you wonder why people keep saying that they're chasing a pointless dream. Because they, they clearly know what they're doing to get a good business. I think, um, like, the big critic, I think, like, the big criticism that they're going for is that, like, oh, plumbing doesn't make much money. Like, yeah, you can be really good at it, but it doesn't pay the bills, not really. Mm. Speaking of that scene, I think Mayor Pauline needs to resign because the underground for the Brooklyn area is fucking terrible. <laughs> Oh yeah, Pauline was uh Pauline was on the news, so get that reference. Oh yeah, man. They, hey, two, Pauline was two just people, there. Two people almost fell to their death because a walkway wasn't up to maintenance standards. Yeah, 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 fair enough. Um but I don't think that's her. There's a lot of death in this movie. There's a lot of death references. Like how how many times has a character said you're going to die or I'm going to kill you? There's a lot more suicide in the movie too. Like I didn't expect to see any and I got at least one. Um but yes, yeah, so Mario tries to fix the valve. Both he and Luigi are on the pipes, which it, honestly Luigi should have stayed behind because I think even he he would have known that Mario that you know both of them would have been too heavy for a thin pipe. Um, but I guess Mario didn't see to stop him. Um, but no, they, I guess not. But they fall crash into a wall, which I think it was you, Sisson, that pointed out to me that the hole was in the shape of Mario's head. Why would they, what's the fucking point of that? Why did they bother? Reference. That's so. That's so stupid. Yeah. I'm sorry. And I like how they they went straight head first into like a full on brick wall, and showing absolutely no signs of damage. Yeah. Look, I understand. <laughs> look, I understand cartoon fucking cartoon physics, whatever. But like, come on, not even a little scratch, not anything, really. <laughs> like a black eye. Luckily, their necks no. broke their fall. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Um, what fucking next? <laughs> <laughs> but they they find they 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 find a huge underground area and um, they get sucked into the pipe. Well, Luigi gets sucked into in, into the pipe first. First, and this is where like um, this is one of the instant instances where there clearly wasn't that much direction with Martin uh, with Chris Pratt's voice because like he literally yeah. he literally goes from zero to Italian. Um, <laughs> where it's like it looks like no one's been here in years, Luigi. <laughs> like just in in an instant, <laughs> like clearly they were not done in the same take. Like, do they go? Okay, could you Italian that line, Italian that line, and Italian that line, please? But if you Italian this line, I swear to God. <laughs> but yeah, so Mario gets sucked into the pipe, um, and he and Luigi get separated, even though they were clearly hold locking arms, like they were holding hands and stuff. But somehow they got separated, but. Whatever. The force, um, the force of the whatever was pulling him was that strong, apparently. I suppose. Uh, Mario is warped to the Mushroom Kingdom, where he meets Toad, and he doesn't really ask many questions. Like yeah, he does just sort of go with it, doesn't he? Like you know, he's Mario goes. There's this little, t there's a little mushroom man talking to me, and that is basically the, the like epitome of his freak out. Yeah, he moves on <laughs> real fucking quick. I mean, like I did, I did, like this is in the trailers, but I do love the line of like, so this is not a dream, and Toad immediately whacks him in the arm, like <laughs> yeah, doesn't hesitate. Funny. I I like that. I do appreciate, like, I will say, like, one of the more endearing characters was Toad. Toad, yes. I found, actually, was actually, like, a pretty good character in the film. He's, like, consistently solid. Yes. And his voice is actually, like, you know, really good. They got, like, ideal casting choice. Yeah, Keegan did a fantastic job as Toad. Oh, he's perfect as Toad. Definitely. Um, so they go to the Mushroom Kingdom, uh, and Luigi is in the Darklands. Yep. That Took is a... All day to come up with that name. <laughs> yeah, right, like, first draft... <laughs> Like, I'm, I'm pretty sure they had an asterisk, therefore we'll think of a better name later. They kind of forgot until the recording. Like, shit, dark. Ah, that's too late now. <laughs> Why did they change? Why didn't they just call it the Koopa Kingdom? Like, what was the problem with that? Well, because it's technically not the kingdom because Bowser's floating above. Because that, that castle was completely run down. 
Like, Luigi was chased by Dryroids into an old castle. I thought Bowser was going to be there, but no, it was just full of shy guys and sniffets. Mm, I just, just, I thought that, you know, the land he ended up in and the little floating bit were both part of the same kingdom. And... Yeah, I'll be honest, I thought that as well. Maybe, but, like, that castle was completely run down. No, uh, none of the candles were lit. Like so, no, no one had no one had been in there for ages, and, and I think it. I think when we see the outside, I think the roof was caved in as well. So like, either that was Bowser's temporary place, or like you know he just decided to move. Too much lava. Too much lava. <laughs> Seven point five out of ten. Too much lava. Um, yeah, it's a miracle that Luigi actually survived any of that. Like, yeah, he was so legit. close to just burning to death. It's like, there's there's no way you should have survived, mate. I'm sorry. There was one moment <laughs> where he stumbled backwards into the lava, but a footing was there to save him. Uh, yeah, literal fucking plot armor. Yeah, he was say he he was chased by dry bones. Uh, some shy guys and sniffets were there. Um, you know, you, you see them in a flash. Then we see Mario in Toe Town. Some of the toads are shocked to see Mario, but others aren't. Yeah, the the reactions towards the yeah. Yeah, most of them really do just carry on about their day. The reactions yeah. that the toads give off to Mario are all like very, very inconsistent. Like there was some that like 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 the ones that were around Mario stopped to actually look, be like, what the fuck is that? And there was and, and there were others who looked, shrugged, and carried on. It's like so, are the toads surprised or aren't they surprised? Uh, it's just a human. Who gives a shit? I got a job to get to. <laughs> I gotta go to work. I gotta pay the bills. I gotta have his nice little. I gotta have a subtle reference. That, like, you know, this product doesn't work. It's like, ah, it's fine. Just blow into it. Yeah. <laughs> Did that happen? Uh, well, we, I must have missed that. Yeah, one. It, was, it was a one off joke, yeah. It was. It was a bit where the toad was asking about the cartridge, uh, the Nest cartridge. That's what he said. No, uh, Jack is oh. paraphrasing a bit. Like, like basically. Uh, no, that's exactly what he says. It's like, no, the, the product's fine. Just blow into it. That was the part. That was the part of the movie when the kid I brought, like when the kid I took to watch the movie started like getting bored and restless in the seat and started talking. I think I missed that entire bit. But yeah, the uh, the toad asked like, like, does this work? And it goes, oh yes, you just have to blow on it. I think that was Martin A too. I th um, a lot of people pointed out that it was. I'm not sure if it was, but um, but yeah, like uh, we we get a montage of Mario running around Toad Town because hey, he's in a world that he doesn't recognize. Look at these floating platforms. He's got to keep up with Toad. Um, also, I'm calling bullshit. Glass pipes are Sprixy Kingdom, not Mushroom Kingdom. They shouldn't be there. Oh, piss off. You know they wouldn't care. Cultural appropriation. It's accurate to the games, guys, isn't it? <laughs> I don't want to fucking hear that criticism ever again. Or that praise ever again. Because there, there are a lot of inaccuracies that Mario enters a green pipe, comes out of a red one. He enters a red one, comes out of a blue one. That's not how they work. They come in and out of the same color. So, shut the fuck up. <laughs> no, so, uh, you, can look, you can no longer say it's accurate to the games. Um, also, notice how like Mario was like super good at parkour and all that stuff. But the moment he goes to like the Toad Town, his parkour skills are just gone <laughs> the bricks he doesn't even think now about like the i know bricks. people will try to like do the whole like the whole like defense of like oh he's in a new world he doesn't understand how it works of course he'd be like incompetent in it it's like if i could shoot a gun in the real world and i was given a gun in a fantasy world i may not know all the controls of the gun but i would still be able to have like a decent you know time with it you know what i mean i think i know what a trigger does like yeah precisely but um but yeah, so then they go to the castle, and the toads, you know, <laughs> princess in another castle, lol. Oh god, yeah, mm. <laughs> that whole dialogue was annoying. Yep. Uh, which, by the way, Peach's security is fucked if the toads could just be distracted by food. <laughs> like, all toads- I mean, Fred did the game's game! I don't remember them getting distracted by food, I'll be honest with you, Chief. Yeah, he went back for the wild on their asses, and they just fell forward instantly. <laughs> yeah, legit. And it's just like, and, and I was like, yeah, all right, sure. Um, also, I love how Mario tries to do the theory of, you know, act like you belong there, no one questions it. Toes didn't buy that shit. <laughs> like, the ones inside the castle, the, the, the guys are like, oh, hey, wait a minute, intruder! Some toads are very smart and some toads are very dumb. Yes. It, it is funny seeing toads literally alpha blood, though. I will admit that. I enjoyed <laughs> yeah, they that. relentlessly chase him, spears ready and they, everything. They fucking wanted Mario dead. <laughs> Which makes a future line make no sense, but go on. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I think I know exactly what line you're on about, Jack. Um, mm -hmm. But then we see the Council of Toads. Um, Peach. No Toadsworth. No, no. Well, I think he was in a flashback. 
Actually, I don't remember. Remember the blue guy being kind of like him? him? But I was like, where's Toad Swift? I want my Toad Swift. Um, but anyway, so uh, Peach says she's going to go to the Kongs and talk to them personally to get their army, which um, I do like that, you know, they didn't go for the damsel in distress and make and actually make Peach do stuff, but it begs the question why Mario's there when you think about it. Um, uh, then... <laughs> One of the most rushed parts of the story happens. Peach, <laughs> literally, this is what happens. Peach exits the Council of Toads. Here's a commotion. Mario runs in, gets pi gets doggy piled on the toad uh, by by the toads. Peach surprise. Oh, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. The first thing is that she he tries to shake hands with him, and she immediately flips him onto his ass. Yes, she does. She she does she does flip him. Um, yep. Uh, and then and then she and then she tells the toads to to let him go. She's surprised to see another human. Uh, Mario asks her to help him save Luigi. He basically threatens her after, saying, You will help me save my brother. And Peach just goes, Okay. She likes getting threatened. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's basically what happened <laughs> in that whole bit. Yeah, that was the fastest sequence of dialogue. Yeah, it was. It was yeah, ludicrously yeah, fast. Saying. Like... She just she just basically accepted and went, yeah, all right, you know, we're, we're just gonna fucking train. And it's like, bro, yeah, really? it was really fucking stupid. I wasn't exactly a big fan of that scene either. No, um, just really goes to show that like, um, Peach doesn't really need Mario in this film. She really doesn't. No, she really doesn't. And a thing like I think there was also like a plot point where um, they had this whole like Peach has like, oh, I only have like a day to prepare to, uh, you know, go to the Kongs and, like, build up the army and stuff. That's not what happens in the film, though. <laughs> yeah, no, she It takes a little bit longer because, because, in the very next scene, um, when Mario, like, you know, stands up to Peach because, you know, Mario was based that way, Peach goes, all right, little shit, I'll see what you're made of. So they go on the little floating platform and they go out into, like, you know, big sea and stuff. And then oh, big, yeah. big, and then the obstacle course builds up. And just for the rest of the evening and the night, uh, Peach just trains. Yeah, yeah, Peach. Yeah, Peach just trains Mario, and of course, yeah. Peach, like you know, perfectly aces the course and stuff like that. You know, because she's been there her whole life. Even though like it was established later on that she completed this course first try, which makes no fucking sense. That's a bit and, much, yeah. And basically goes like, okay, you try it, Mario, and throughout and like. The world's quickest training montage happens <laughs> with I um, with I Need a Hero in the background with Mario going over the obstacle course and just constantly failing and constantly failing. He finds out that he needs to eat mushrooms to get it, uh, you know, to be like super powerful and stuff. And of course he hates mushrooms, so like, you know, he has to force it in and, he, you know, he pukes up a mushroom and he depowers and stuff like that. And he does this relentlessly. He does this like throughout all the night and through all the evening until at the until at the very morning he does it like like Tommy and like pointed this out like privately like um when we were talking about the film um and like it's something that I agree with I appreciate that Mario didn't do the course uh the way Peach did yes but he did it his own way yes which you know, he, I I like ground pound he did you know he did like his parkour stuff he did like his ground pound and I will say like um one thing that I appreciate the tr like the montage for being so quick is that like it does go to show that Mario has, like, now that he's gotten used to the world, he's now, like, back to, like, his prime parkour stuff, which I appreciate. And, but at the very end, because, you know, Mario can't be completely there just yet, s some piranha surprise plant. piranha plant comes in and just, you know, bounces him off. Can I ask a question? Hmm. Go ahead. What is it? Peach said to show you to spend the day preparing, but she doesn't actually do any preparing at all. So what was the preparing originally going to be before Mario showed up? What she actually said, what she actually said was she was gonna she was gonna head to the Kongs the next uh, in the morning, um, right, and that okay. she was gonna go uh, and that she was gonna gonna go and get ready. I guess maybe she was gonna do some more training herself, and that Mario. was... Uh, okay, so I got okay, so I got that wrong. My bad. Um, but um, but yeah, they don't even leave in the morning. They leave like in the afternoon, if anything. So you're a fucking liar, Peach. Uh, <laughs> But um, but yeah, like um, I do I do like that you know Peach still thinks Mario is ready to come along even though he didn't beat the obstacle course because yeah he was still close enough 
Because you know if this was if this was any other film, the fucking sensei would just be like, "No, you're not ready yet." There is like that is like one thing I do appreciate about Peach in the film is like even though like she's a bit of a Mary Sue, she never once like belittles Mario or anything like that. She does actually treat Mario with like a good bit of respect, which I do appreciate. Yeah, and um, and like Peach said, and you know Peach did say she cleared the obstacle course first try. Who made the course? Because I thought Peach made the Is course. Is it randomly generated? Oh, yeah. Like, I, I thought Peach made the course, but... That no. was just there? Yeah, yeah like, 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 do, like, did, did the Toads have to do the course beforehand or something? Like, was that Toad guard training or some shit? I cannot imagine a Toad doing that obstacle course because they're just... Yeah. Also, um, a moment that's skipped when Mario eats the first mushroom and, like, um, he says that he's tall. Peach points out that he's strong. And one line she says, she says, and you can jump. He was able to jump beforehand. Yeah, but now he has the super jump. They could have at least explained that. They do to give off basic rules where it's like, oh, if you get hit, you lose the power up, which will uh, be a little bit inconsistent later on in the yep. film. But we'll get to there when we get there. I'll get to that. Um, so then we cut to Bowser, which... Blatantly using the Bowser's Fury theme song from Bowser's Fury. Not even a remix, it's literally Bowser's Fury. <laughs> I'm just like, that had to have been a placeholder. <laughs> Surely. Because uh -huh. <laughs> it was just. The music. Mm, the music just feels like it was an afterthought for half of the scenes. Mm. Um, and this is where we get Bowser's true motive of he has the star, so he wants to marry Peach. And I love the I love the Coopers. It's like we will roll, we will rise against the Master Kingdom. Yeah, I will confront the princess. Yeah, I will ask her to marry me. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what? <laughs> and more guys. Yeah. <laughs> I loved that. I I like like even the Coopers had even the minions had no idea that was gonna be his plan. The audience that like Bowser's audience's reaction was one hundred percent my reaction as well. Same. So it's like, ah, so we're just evolving Bowser into just being a simp. Again. Worse than someone, a simp, he's a straight up incel. Someone will bring up, he's like this in the games, to which I say, not really. Even then, he does love Peach, he's not that fucking- he's still a threat at least. Yeah, I always considered his simpage for Peach and his, like, conquest and domination shit to be two separate things. I can't believe the movie put them into one motivation, that's weird to me. Yeah. He at least made sure the job was done before, you know, going back to his treasures. They went full on with, like, the Odyssey storyline and it's like, ugh. Like, I, I always suspected it was like, you know, I want to marry Peach and conquer the world, not I want to conquer the world because she won't accept me, that's- I never, I never got that from the game version of Bowser. That feels like a change they made for the movies. No, Bowser was going to, t yeah, Bowser was like always going to try and take over the world. He always just saw Peach as like a bonus or like an yeah. easy way to get it. Peach is just gravy. Yeah, precisely. <laughs> there is like, like, like one of the minions that says like, "Oh, uh, what if she says no?" And he gets turned into a dry bone, which. That was funny to me. Um, and then Bowser's like, "Then I will destroy the Mushroom Kingdom," and then everyone's back to cheering. Um, yeah, it, it was it was fucking weird. Um, Simpy Bowser is 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 the worst bit of Bowser. Um, but then we get a cut of Luigi with the shy guys, and that's the only time we get a flashback of them as babies. Um, <laughs> literally, Babe Mario, Baby Luigi. I wish we saw more of them as kids, like you know, to see how much Luigi had to rely on Mario. Basically, uh, I'm sorry, yeah. but the eyes took me completely out of that scene. You are. <laughs> the eyes took me completely out. I'm yeah, sorry. at one point, oh, yeah, how they were tiny dogs. <laughs> at one point, there's a reason Baby Sonic had green eyes. Like, at what point does the iris and you know the rest of the eye come in? I don't think I want to see the in between of that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you think baby teeth is hard? Wait till your baby eyes fall out. But guys, the baby bros look like that in the games. Isn't they loyal to the first material? It's also um, a, a, a thing I noticed. Basically, uh, the baby that was bullying Luigi was a baby Spike. Um, <laughs> I didn't notice that. I'll Spike's just a bitch. Yeah. He he had the same glasses. So so he's <laughs> why is why is why does Spike hate them so much? Genuinely, what happened? Like and what's why, going on with you, dude? Why did Mario and Luigi work for him? <laughs> yeah, that makes no sense at all. Like, what's going on here? They must have been desperate. They were on, they were in very hard times. Yeah, sure, so we'll go with that. <laughs> I'll tell you what, 
Jack, 15 years from now when we get the spike in Netflix series, they'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I'll be there to rip it a fucking new asshole when I'm there, so shush. Manga writer <laughs> covers spike, a retrospective. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can't wait for that video, Jack. <laughs> Oh, God. Uh, if I was to make a video about the Mario film, it'd probably be like an hour long. When we come back to, 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 to Mario and Peach, it, uh, Peach basically fully trusts him, and we don't know yeah. why. Um, then Toad because is there. Because good enough. And the line that makes me, you know, she, she, she lets Toad come just because he said he wasn't scared. Like, that He sure. was emergency food. He was emergency food. Emergency food? <laughs> Emergence? No. Peach just looks to Mario going like, Mario, don't get any ideas. <laughs> it's either that or she was going to use him like the Smash Brothers neutral B. I don't know. <laughs> and, um, basi- and like, as they went into like the pipe and like, you know, before they're about to go into the pipe, Peach gives off a speech and goes like, yes, I got all this stuff, but I'm not alone. I have this. I have Mario here with me. And all the toads like, you know, stop applauding and go silent going like, who is he? Oh, yeah. She and goes, then, like, He's Peach- not important. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, film, for explaining that. Thank you, also, thank you, film, so much for explaining Mario's role in this movie. I really appreciate <laughs> it. I'm glad that you had to make that point for me. <laughs> oh, I can imagine the video review is going to keep cutting back to that one line every time Peach. You does fucking anything. know it, mate. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. I'm doing that in my review. Um, so then we get an unapologetic, pointless montage of them going to the other kingdoms, like. Across a bridge where all the cheap Which cheeps. ruins the end credit scene, but we'll go on. Yep. Goes a bit where the cheap cheeps are. Uh, crossing Toasterina. It's, ba- it's blatantly Toasterina with the floating pyramids. And Yoshi's yep. Island. Which um, someone pointed out to me afterwards that when we saw the map, Peach basically did the longest fucking detour going to the Kong Islands. Because they, ba- cause they, they basically went... Because the, the Kong Islands... I think Kong Islands were in front of them. But they basically went left, right, left, now to the Kong Islands. Oh, we need to... It's like, yes, Peach, I want to get an army of the Kongs, you know, as quickly as possible because Bowser is an impending doom. Also, Peach, massive detour. I wish we saw more of Mario getting used to the world, like seeing more of of the things that, you know, is not normal for him. Like him seeing a Yoshi. Like, you know, yeah. and, and like may, maybe the Yoshi Why tries to eat him. power up. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, try and power power. Because, like, he sees Mario, uh, sorry, he sees Peach use the fire flower and he just doesn't question it. Yeah, Mario doesn't use the fire flower once. He no, doesn't he doesn't. Fl- he doesn't. Use- no, Ma- yeah. Yeah, like, Mario's most, like, his, like, his second most iconic power up besides the super mushroom. He never uses it. Not yeah, once. Donkey Kong stops him from using one. I'm like, oh, come on, don't blue ball me with the fucking fire flower. It's the one power up I genuinely want to see. Yeah. And yeah, it also goes to show that, like, um, the way people get the powers are very, like, you know, unlike the games. Where it's like, with a mushroom, you eat it. With a fire flower, you just have to touch it. Or with ice flowers, you have to touch it. Yeah. With a cat suit, I don't fucking know how you do it. He doesn't fucking show how we got into that cat suit. But anyways, we're, go- we're getting it way ahead of ourselves. Yeah, yeah. Like, this is like a big, like, um, the scene between, um, Fire Peach and Mario and Toad and stuff like that. This is where, like, the big issue with with this film like really arose for me is that like this film it this scene in like any other film would have been a really good scene you know yeah. you you can't go wrong with campfire scenes right it's the time where like everyone relaxes they all sit down from a great adventure and they talk about you know maybe their big insecurities or their backstories and stuff like that the problem with this movie is that this scene lasts for about a minute yep and then it's just it's over this is this is what this is why I have said at the beginning of this podcast that this film feels like a cutscene compilation. It's like it's like it's like scene 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 scene. But it's Jack, bullshit. you're forgetting. What are you expecting from a Mario movie? Let's not a get into that. Story. Let's not get into that. <laughs> I've had I've had that thrown at me like yeah, four times. The games did a good stories. I'm gonna f- <laughs> if they fucking say that to me. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> the big, the biggest problem I have with like, with like Peach is that they, they, her, her, her backstory is a first draft. Like it oh, is yeah, a it first is, draft. It's, it's, it's so bare bone. Yeah. It's How like, does she get into the pipe? No one fucking knows. Why do toads trust her? No one fucking knows. How does she get so strong in such a short period of time? No one fucking knows. Why is she a princess? No one fucking. No knows. No one fucking knows. 
Like, this is like the big problem that I have with Peach as well, is that the film is so scared to make Peach be seen as weak that she o like she outshines every other character in the film, which is really annoying because it's the Super Mario Brothers film. Why is Mario here? Besides wanting to save Luigi. Yeah, do the Princess Peach movie and make her the main character. Don't do the Mario movie and then make her the main character of the Mario movie. That's not what she's for. She's she's a supporting cast member to Mario and Luigi. You can have a strong female character and still show weakness because they build on that weakness. They overcome the weakness to show true strength. You can have weakness in a character. What I feel like the film should have done with Peach is that... They could keep the whole, like, you know, super strong female character stuff. That isn't my issue, right? Like, I'm fine with Peach being strong. She's been strong in, like, you know, other fucking IPs and stuff. So, like, we know that she's capable of doing some cool shit. The problem with that is that Peach gets strong. It doesn't really have to be punished for it, right? There's never a point in the film where Peach gets saved. Or there isn't any point where, like, you know, you know, Bowser does never kidnaps Peach. You know what I mean? There's nothing like that in this film. Mario doesn't actively go out of his way to save Peach. If you want a strong, if you want to have a character who's strong and you want people to relate to them, you need to make them overcome the actual challenge. Yes. Having her be kidnapped by Bowser and escape, you know, like she's, maybe she starts the movie all dainty and, and cutesy like you'd expect. And then after she's locked up, she escapes and realizes, hey, I've got to toughen up. And then at the end of the movie, she becomes like oh, that'd the, be sick. the yeah, badass. That'd be, cool. that'd be so much fucking better. It says she's just, Terminatrix. What also could have been <laughs> interesting is that if it was explained that maybe she has been kidnapped by Bowser before when she was still yeah. weak. Yeah, that would have been nice to bring that up. But yeah. she's escaped before, so she knows the threat of Bowser. Oh, yeah, that, that actually could have been really cool where it's like, uh, Mario could even ask Peach, like, yeah, why did you get so strong? Like, what made you want to be, what made you want to become so strong? And Peach goes like, yeah, because I was kidnapped and I never wanted to go through that again. And you could have brought that up in the piano scene that comes up after this. And they, uh, like, 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 they could have even <laughs> yeah. done, they, they, they even could have worked that and, you know, show a sign of weakness of Peach by having maybe a PTSD moment. Like, I know that's asking a bit much, but, you know, it, it could have been a good moment of, like, you know, when, when, when someone says Bowser, she has, like, a visible sign of, like, freak out for a moment. Because, you know, because she yeah. was taken when she was younger. Obviously, big, scary monster in the eyes of a child. That's terrifying. But, like... Yeah. And, and that trauma doesn't really go. But, you know, she would she would overcome that and thus be a fantastic character later on. That is giving me other M flashbacks, though. So maybe don't... That specifically? Mm, okay, fair point. Uh, but, yes, we get... We get Bowser playing on the... Playing on the Ludwig von Cooper piano. I noticed that. <laughs> it said that on there. <laughs> um, and is. And he sings one of the worst songs ever written. No, it's getting an Oscar soon. I I hope I hope that the people who I hope that people who like the song are saying it as a meme. I hope to God that that's the case because it's not a fucking good song. It's not. It's just not. It's it's even worse. Yes, I know. I hate fun. Shut up. Thing <laughs> is, thing is, Jack Black. He is a good singer. Like oh yeah, he's, he, he's phenomenal. He, but the problem is, they gave him the wrong genre. It's literally, yeah. it's it's like having Ozzy Osbourne do opera. It's what it is. Yeah, it's like, it's like getting Michael Jackson to do metal. Yeah! It should have been him on the piano at first, and then he throws the piano away, and it becomes like a rock band. That would be, be so funny. That would have been fucking amazing. I would have loved that. I would be like, you know what? I'm for this. That would have saved Bowser, honestly, if they did that. <laughs> but yeah, he's singing all this stuff, and then, like, fucking Bowser's dad comes in going, like, what are you doing? Well, no, no, well, no, no. Camera Cam comes in to report the news, which, honestly, like, b before that where happens... Where did they get the reports? Yes. Who found... Yeah, where do they get... Like, how... How? Who found this where's out? Where's the source? They keep mentioning. Where is they the keep source? mentioning intelligence, but where's the intelligence? Like we never like, literally. Who's the fucking intelligence? What crystal ball are they looking at to get this information? <laughs> <laughs> During the rewatch, I I kept an eye in the background to see if there was anything. Like if if, if there was, was there like, anything? No, there wasn't. Wow. There was nothing. I, I was expecting like a little Goomba head sticking out or something like that, but no, the fuck all. So it's a total ass pull that he knows about all this shit? Pretty much. Yeah, literal uh, plot convenience. It's like, great, fantastic. As he's giving the report, they're playing the underground theme on the piano. Uh, yes. Which has one of my favorite which has one of my favorite moments of Bowser slamming the lid the, the, the piano on Kamek's fingers. Uh, yeah. Which, you know, I love the threatening side of Bowser. I love that side of him. Like when he's walking away and he says, don't you dare pull that cover up. 
That was great. I love that shit. Yeah, like like pain builds great character. Like I love That's that, sure. but he's just such a fucking simp. Um. But then, because the movie spends the entire everything with Bowser is hinting to him having a really shit life before we see him, but they never go into detail about what happened to him or why he's like this. He just subtly hints, "Oh, my life sucked at some point, and now I'm a dickhead because of it." Yeah, um, I guess. Yeah. But then the shy guys come with the Ouija, uh, and whoever designed uh, and whoever thought it was a good idea to make them fucking talk. Do they not normally do that? No, not in the no, games. They usually go fucking like. <laughs> That, would, that honestly would have been really funny if the shy guys did that and I was like, what's that? What's that? They did what? <laughs> oh, you can understand them? You're like fucking yeah, skippy? Like, yeah, that'd yeah, be like, great. Yeah, like you can understand. But Travis <laughs> in the back, I'm like, how do you, what? <laughs> yeah, that would have been great. That would have been, 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 been good because it shows world that building. That would have done something to stick to the games, which I thought this film fucking did, but it doesn't. But they just gave him like, you know, it's like, we found him in the dark lands. Yes. It's like, and so um, Bowser goes to uh, Luigi to interrogate him. This is where all the gay shipping comes in. So, yeah, because <laughs> Bowser is very, very handsy with our boy Luigi. Yeah, so Bowser questions Luigi. And um, <laughs> Luigi... There's one, good joke, there's one good joke at the very end. I'll give the film that. Luigi being the true wingman to, to Mario, <laughs> basically. Where just like, you know, like Bowser's like... Do princesses find him attractive? And Luigi's like, they are if they have good taste. <laughs> like Luigi, true wingman to his bro there. I love that. I will say that's like Charlie Day's like best performance in the film is Luigi. He's so fucking, pr like when he speaks fast and he screams, he's just, Mwah. it's perfect. Yeah. Them combining his cowardice, but still being an absolute fucking bro is great. I know, right? It's good shit. Also like um, uh, a great line from Bowser, but you know, like, uh, whereas, like, um, whereas, like, you know, take him to the dungeons. We'll see how tough his brother, this Mario, is when I kill his brother. Like, you know, threatening yeah. Bowser's good Bowser, but they fucking make him a simp, and he's just fuck. I wish he was more than a simp, yeah. So, yeah, I think is it like the next scene plays and like fucking Luigi's thrown into a cage? Yes, over where, yeah, and then we yeah. get the fucking Luma. Ah, the Luma. Never explained why he's there. I thought I fucking Rosa hate the Luma. I thought it's Rosa a funny Lina? joke the first time he shows up, and then every other time they do the same joke, and it gets old fast. Yeah, I thought Rosalina was going to be in this film because of the Luma. I thought there was going to be a post-credit scene or something where the Luma was freed, and Rosalina was just like, or, 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 or like maybe you see her be like, "Oh, there you are, my child," and then boom, end film. No fucking nothing. It's just there. Like, why is it there? And the Luma's just there to say suicide jokes, and I'm fucking... Literally, King Penguin is my exact reaction going like, Will you shut up? <laughs> shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up! <laughs> literally capable of flying and could escape from between those bars anytime it wants and does not. But it doesn't want to because it wants to die. It would have turned into a warp and, like, helped everybody blast out or something. But it wants to die. But if it wants to die, it can just get out the cage and fall. There's lava directly beneath it. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Uh, I shouldn't harp on too much, but the fact they bring that Luma Jack back, like, three times yeah. is just... Ugh. Then we get, uh... Um, so fucking frustrating. Then we get to the Kong Kingdom. Um... Which, uh, they meet- Honestly, a line I like- it's, it, it's not funny, but I find it a little bit humorous, where it's like, That gorilla's wear, uh, uh, wearing a sports jacket, and so it's like, I feel kind of underdressed! <laughs> I would like that if it wasn't Mario regressing back to when he first showed up in the Mushroom Kingdom and doing the tiny Mushroom Man talk on the Mebo. You know what? Yes. Actually, I agree with you on that. Yeah. Yes, actually. Fucking hell. Because, like, if he was still questioning stuff... Oh, God, Tommy and fucking system agreed. Jesus <laughs> Christ, hell really hath frozen over. I know, right? Because, like, if, if Mario was Ugh. still questioning stuff up till that point, then it would have been a nice addition to it. But, yeah. like, he, yeah, he, he stops questioning. Like, um, it, it was in my notes, but I skipped past it. During the training section, like, when they're on the floating platform and the question, bar, the question mark block rises from the water, he doesn't question any of that. He's just like, oh, okay, this is happening. But, yeah, no, I fully agree with you there. And uh, then we get Take On Me during the Kingdom Tour. Which is uh, no reason. I it's I love Take On Me. It's a it's a great track, but Jesus Christ, it's the wor it's the worst placement of a pop song I have ever seen in my or like a song in general. And that's coming from like you know 
Bring Me to Life by Evanescence and fucking Daredevil. It's that fucking bad. If you told me that that if you told me that I was watching that movie the first time and there was no music and the guy behind me had his iPhone out, I would have believed you. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's so, how yeah, fucking good, good out, analogy, honestly. <laughs> that's how out of place it felt. It's so weird. And the best, the worst part is the actual music that was composed for that scene is so. Much it's better. so much better. It's way better. I will say it's a bit grandiose for what's happening, but ultimately it's so much better than Take on Me. It's it's still better than Take on Me though. It's still way better. Yeah. Um, it's just a quick reminder that yes, indeed, this film was made by Illumination. If your standards were really high, then what the fuck were you thinking? <laughs> We meet, uh, we see Cranky Kong, uh, which despite our praise for the voice acting, Cranky Kong is my least favorite of the voices. There was one tweet that went, there was one tweet that went out that like, um, that said that like Gilbert Gottfried would have been perfect as Cranky Kong. It's like, man, <gasps> if he was shit. still alive, he would have been perfect. Oh, that, I never thought of that. So yeah. He would have took that role in a heartbeat. He yeah. would have. Rest in peace. Rip to a real oh, one. I'm upset. I think Rip Danny DeVito one. could have been a good Cranky Kong as well. Oh, he'd be so funny. <laughs> mm. Oh, that'd be great. But, um, What's he get like three lines of dialogue in the whole movie though? It'd be a great three three lines. So they so they arrive and Crank Kong knows that Peach is there for his army. He just somehow knows. Yeah, does is that ever explained? No. No. It's like like like, like Peach is like, we are here for yeah, I know why you're here. Like, do they have spies? What are all these spies doing in this film? And like why is there even anything at this point if the spies can just tell everybody everything? It's so dumb. I love to imagine like even the Mushroom Kingdom has spies. There's like a toad with like a TF2 gorilla mask on his face. <laughs> <laughs> walking through the Kong Kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so basically they do this whole thing where Cranky Kong does the whole th whole shtick of like, Oh, I'm not going to give you my army for whatever reasons, because I am racism. And then Mario, again, being based as usual, just immediately stands up to him going, We're not leaving without your army. <laughs> And it was a, it was a good it was a good moment. I did appreciate that. Like I like I saw that scene in the theater and I saw Mario do that, I was like, oh, oh, <laughs> Damn. He's not afraid to hit an old man. And then Cranky no, Kong, Cranky Kong's laughing. He's like, who is this guy? So yeah, basically Cranky Kong goes like, all right, I, I'll agree to your terms, but what you have to do first is you need to beat my son in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Yeah. And Mario, of course, agrees. And then in comes the worst character in the movie. <sighs> Donkey Kong. They have to DK rap for a bit. And he's not credited, the cunts. Yep, Grant Kirkhope is not credited uh, for the DK rap. Cunts. Yeah, who made that song? Did the game itself make that song? Because that's what they said. That yeah, it, it literally says DK <laughs> rap from Donkey Kong 64. Someone still made it, guys. And what really, like, again, another massive problem with this film is highlighted in, this, in the fight between Donkey Kong and Mario. Mario's win doesn't feel earned. No. Mario, the only reason Mario wins is because he gets lucky, gets the cat suit, and for some reason just masters the power up on the fly. And it just, it's so fucking forced. The only reason he had the cat suit is because Cranky Kong literally says, because I don't want this fight to end in five seconds, I put power ups everywhere. You're welcome, Mario. I can appreciate that because uh, you know if you've got the power ups, fucking use them. It makes the it would make a gladiator fight a lot more interesting in real life if we had power ups. True, but why didn't Donkey Kong use the power ups as well? Pride, I guess. He's an absolutely cocky motherfucker who thinks he doesn't need them, and I think he does try to go for one eventually after he starts losing. But I think that, no, he doesn't. At that point, he Mario beats him, right? Uh, he? No, no, he oh. he doesn't go for any of the power ups at all. He go he 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 runs away to go to barrels to throw at Mario, but Mario dodges because he has the cat suit. Well, then that raises questions because later on he uses one. Fuck, that's even more questions for this movie, shit. This is like, yeah, again, like, to go back to my point, is that, like, Mario has just, like, all his wins given to him. The only reason he wins, like, a majority of his fights is because he gets power-ups. He just gets the right one at the right time. And, again, sure, it's like that in the games. Yes, if you get one OP power-up, it makes going through a level or, like, beating a boss very easy. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, that's not good storytelling. No, it's not. That works in a video game. That's fine. But that does not- In the games, it's like platforming and shit. Like, it helps you throughout. That was a fight. Yeah, that shit doesn't translate to a film. <laughs> if, like, yeah. 
the like this is where like the bit like the whole um video game storytelling versus movie storytelling like completely falls apart with this film a big critique nowadays is that video games are trying way too hard to be movies you know with like last of us god of war and stuff like that mario is a film trying too hard to be a video game yeah and it's following the same rules of a video game to where it's like so committed to like you know being so close to the games like you know referencing as much as they can the big question that i'm asking is why didn't nintendo just make another game what was the point of making this film besides contract chef having said that i liked the fight sequence i thought it was pretty good yeah it's pretty that's all i can give it <laughs> roller coasters look nice but i'm not gonna say they do good storytelling there yeah i'm stealing that <laughs> there are two large issues <laughs> uh, I, I have with the fight itself aside from what you guys mentioned uh, Mario uses the mini mushroom. He gets hit and loses the power up. That's not how mini mushrooms work. If you get hit as a mini mushroom, you die. Um, and also, uh, all of the Kongs wear clothes, but Donkey Kong wears a tie. Is he going commando? Is that technically him going commando? I'm gonna steal something from a fanfic I read once where the clothing <laughs> are all treated like accessories and some people just wear more accessories than others. That's the only explanation sure, I can think Sure, we'll go with that, fuck it. There was also, uh, okay, <laughs> I'm, I'm mentioning this, and you guys, will, you guys probably know why I'm mentioning this. When Donkey Kong was flexing to the audience, Cranky told him, please don't. And Donkey Kong yeah. was very happy, saying, Come on, they love it! And you'll see why that's relevant later. Anyway. Um, yeah. So Mario and Donkey Kong fight. After a bit of Mario getting his ass completely handed to him, he just... He, 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 he wins. Um, yeah, he goes from just like, you know, fucking base Goku to Super Saiyan God. Basically. <laughs> <laughs> At like 20 seconds. Then, uh, then Cranky's like, you know, all right, fine, you know, he, here's my fucking army. Now, now we're gonna go build carts and shit. Which, why do the Kongs need carts? Why is why is that their gimmick? Yeah, why that is, is that their that's gimmick? So weird. I'm fine with it. It's whatever. It's the I'm least not. of my issues. I ain't fine with it. I'm just. I like, want to know is... how a bunch of monkeys living in the middle of a fucking ocean figured out how to build motors, and yet they can't do anything beyond that. All their tech is still wood. That just makes it make less sense. We know why they did it. They want to do Mario Kart, and it's like, why the- like, Mario Kart doesn't belong in this story, will you stop? Yeah, Mario Kart could be its own thing, you could make a whole movie based on Mario Kart. That could have been like the end credits scene, for all we know, you know? Like the ending scene, all the all the boys, like, you know, just like, go, going like into a co- like, going into go-karts and just, you know, riding off into the sunset and shit. That'd be cool, but nah, it's gotta be a plot point. Because we want to sell merch. So they go. So they build. They build the carts um, in a sequence. That hey, here's the spinners from Mario Kart. A and you press an A button. You get it. Um, uh, then Thunderstruck fucking plays. Toad has a monster truck, which is like okay, fair enough. A lot of people thought that was a reference to SMG4. Uh, for some fucking reason, of, no. of all the YouTubers to reference, and that's like saying that's like saying Fire Donkey Kong is a reference to Alvin Earth. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, like I think that yeah. was just pure coincidental because hey, little guy in, in 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 the big monster truck. There's also like yeah, there's also a big there's like um there's a scene beforehand before they start making the carts where like they start talking about plans, and Donkey Kong and Mario don't like each other. And they have a rivalry. Watch this go nowhere. And even after the the cards are made, like when they're on the starting line, air quotes, Do, um, Doi Kong is just like, I hate you. Um, which also something, uh, two things I want to point out, uh, looking at my notes. Mario somehow knows how to drive the cart no problem, despite the fact he made his van stool at the start of the film. I'm going to say that's because the van is a piece of shit and they can't afford to get it fixed at that point. Maybe. I, I feel like Mario knows how to drive. They talk about the van needing to be taken care of and like in the apply application in the website. Yeah, to be fair, it, it did look very old, so. I think what could yeah. have been a good way of doing things is maybe Mario is like, he, he, he could drive no problem, but maybe in the human world, maybe he has a couple of speeding tickets because he drives a bit too recklessly. <laughs> Oh my god, that's clever. <laughs> he tries. That'd be that'd, actually, that'd be yeah, that'd be funny actually. So like, that's been pretty cute. You know, like so like when he's in a car, he's just like, nah, I'm driving. You keep you keep getting us in trouble. Yeah, and <laughs> and 
and you know that's maybe <laughs> when when the engine stalls because Luigi kind of doesn't know how to drive. Which then, like when when Mario is taught ha- how to drive, and you know, like you know, like maybe someone tells him, and it's like, okay, so this is the drive, dash the brake, you do the brakes on the turn, and you get a boost. You think you do that? Mario's like, oh, I got this. It's like I was born for this. Because that's the thing. He just because uh, going a little bit ahead in the Rainbow Road sequence, he knows how to drift boost. Like he he gets fucking triple boost and everything. He just knows how to do it. Yeah. Um, no one did. Did anyone tell him how to do no, it? No, no one told like, him. No, it never gets brought up. I assumed it was an accident. It it never gets brought but up. But I need to point out. Yeah. This this conversation that you guys just had. This is exactly why a writer's room needs to go past one draft. Yes, yes, it is. <laughs> it really Something is. Something that Nintendo, for some reason, is very allergic to. And please, <laughs> please, stop letting Miyamoto tell stories. Yo. He's just not good at it. Um, also, Peach just has a biker's outfit. Yeah, where the fuck did that? Was that Candy Kong's? I want to know where that came from. <laughs> was that Candy Kong's? Why Candy Ooh. Kong? Ooh. <laughs> Who the fuck else is it going to be, Eddie? Come on, let's be real. Yeah, it's not going to be Tiny Kongs. It's not Damn. definitely not Dixie's. Damn. Did she just bring it with her? Because she wasn't wearing it underneath her dress, because uh. you see her legs, and she's not wearing it. I'm sorry. Yeah, there were there were weird moments. <laughs> like, like she just she just had the bike. Like, I, I at least would have seen a it's little bit. To sell bit. merchandise, fellas. It's to sell merchandise. And so you can get at least two uninterrupted R shots that last for six seconds. I at least would have appreciated a moment <laughs> where, like, maybe, like, like maybe there was like a biker suit like on a hanger, and a Kong is just like a like gesturing towards it for Peach because she's you know riding a yeah. bike and she's in a dress. But no, you see how this film could just be so much better if they actually fucking tried. Yeah. yeah. Um, mm, it's not even hard either. Like, holy shit. Could you imagine how good this film would be if it, they tried to treat it like, I don't know, a movie? Uh, so then so then we cut back to Bowser, who's, try, who's like practicing his proposal to Peach, which, on, okay, another moment that did actually make me laugh. He holds the Piranha Plant bouquet from Odyssey. They start biting and he just fucking stomps them out. <laughs> it's like, I, well, they're dead. I genuinely loved yeah. that moment. That was really funny to me. Yeah, that was like the only joke that got chuckled. No, that and the blooper later on got a chuckle out of me, yeah. Kamek in drag. Um, Which has been done before, yes. let's be honest. Uh, Dream Team Brothers did it. But he didn't have the lipstick in Dream Team Brothers. That that was added in the Mario film. Okay, whose idea was the lipstick? Was it Kamek's or Bowser's? <laughs> <laughs> now that's the now that's the age old question. I'm willing to believe it was Kamek. <laughs> got to get it to the got to get really into it, sire. No, I like the idea of Bowser forced to get on him, and when Kamek questions it, he goes, "It'll be easier for me to practice my lines. Put the lipstick on." <laughs> I like the heels. I like the height the heels give me. I like to imagine this isn't even his first time practicing. Like, okay, from the top. They've got the they've got the lines all the way down, and um, oh yeah, they're interrupted by the Cooper. I, I'm I'm saying I'm guessing a, a like a sergeant or a lieutenant to the Cooper army. R- remind me why this one is special because I can't remember what was different about him. Cause he has spikes on his shell. Was he the blue one? Yeah, he's the blue uh, Cooper trooper. Yeah, so he catches the he catches him doing it, and it's like a. Hey, there's another mysterious report. They're on Rainbow Road now. Yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't even question. He doesn't even question what they're doing. That implies that's definitely not the first time they practiced. At this point, at, at this point, with all the intelligence they keep talking about, I just like to think Peach is live tweeting the entire adventure, and Mario doesn't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! When he's when like he's, he's there, Chippendale. When you, when you don't see, it, she's taking a selfie with like him getting into the car, saying like, "Lol, this guy doesn't know how to drive." Hashtag get wrecked. <laughs> Watches him, like, fail starting boost. Lamau can't even start his car, get wrecked. <laughs> L plus ratio cup, see the mold. <laughs> so then, so, uh, then we get back to the carts, um, to the cart sequence, which they drive onto Rainbow Road. Um, yeah. And this is where... <laughs> okay, do you guys actually think that Mario was genuinely flirting, or do you think he was genuinely just being nice? I think he was being nice. Yeah. Because <sighs> fucking DK and Toad just came out of nowhere... Because uh, Donkey Kong is like, bro, are you flirting? That's so weak. And Toad just comes in, saying like, nah, you can get any princess. Um, it's also a little. Thanks, Toad. You're a bro. <laughs> it's also a little detail I noticed. I don't know if you guys saw, but when Donkey Kong was showing off here and there, 
um, you could see a little bit of Peach just rolling her eyes, looking not impressed at all. I didn't yeah. notice that. Um, it was right Everybody's before horny for Peach. the Rainbow Roads um, segment. Well, no, I, I, I don't think he was showing off a Peach. I just think he just wanted to, you know, make Mario look bad. Jack, there's two female characters in this fucking movie. Of course, everyone's horny for Peach. Who else they got Dixie? There's two <laughs> stars and no women. What the hell am I supposed to do? You go to fucking Brooklyn and meet Pauline, who's about to lose her job as a mayor. <laughs> True. Um, I will say uh, the Rainbow Road sequence w- was a really fun time to watch. It was a visual spectacle, to be sure. The animation this movie is top notch, and no one can yeah. deny like, that. Like I love, like, like everything was happening at once. Like it wasn't just a case of one character going through hell; every character was going through hell in their own minute. And I, it, I liked like that. It, it symbolized like the absolute chaos that is a Mario Kart track. And yeah. It's like, yeah, it's cool just wish I cared. <laughs> yeah, no. Like, um, I wish they hadn't spent the entire movie building up this Kong army to have them defeated very easily. Very fucking easily. They all get, yeah, they get wiped out and, like with no bothers, and then we just have, like, then we have little Power Trooper, who's, like, absolutely fucking insane all of a sudden. Just absolutely kamikaze. He just, he turns into a blue shell and just fucking screams <laughs> fucking poof. Is this, I'm sorry, but is that an ability that every Koopa can have? Do they have to be blue? Can they paint themselves blue and then they can do it? Or is it literally you have to be born blue? They have to be born being able to blow up. They have to, like, bob bombs. No, I feel like if they tried to paint themselves on, they, like, they try and do it. But then it's like, it looks like it's going to happen. They go and do it, but then it's just... No. It's just a gory mess or something. <laughs> like, there is, um, there is a moment, like, uh, dur- during the sequence, you know, like, Mario's being chased by the Blue Cooper in the fucking Killdozer. Um, oh yeah, and like you know, he shortcuts uh, during the section. Um, Peach disables her anti grav to save Toad, which I liked. I thought that was a pretty good, pretty nicely done bit. Um, then Mario's yeah. cart gets destroyed. He he jumps onto a Koopa's cart that gets destroyed by the Killdozer, to which he he he's able to climb around the fucking thing because you know. Not sure how he did that. Yeah, okay. somehow. Uh, Donkey Kong is there driving up the rear. He gets on Donkey Kong's cart and they're like, yeah, all right, let's do this. Let's kill this sucker. And, you know, send out a rocket. Boom. Kill those destroyed. They're all driving to victory. Koopa's still alive and kamikazes. He literally he literally activates the console and types in no clip. He literally, no, no, you, you, <laughs> I believe he screams blue shell as he's doing yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Get it. Shell. Like he's going, Wolverines. <laughs> It's like, um, oh! You get the reference, don't you remember that item from Mario Kart? It's like, not enough that he's actually a blue shell. He has to say the words <laughs> blue shell to make sure you know that it's a blue shell he's doing. Uh, Is it a blue shell? Yeah, yeah, it was blue shell. Oh yeah, he's blue the whole time. Oh, okay. I thought, I, thought, I didn't know he was a blue shell. Can you, can you imagine if I was saying he's like, hey, what's that on your back? Oh, it's my blue shell. Oh no, wait, shit! <laughs> it just explodes. <laughs> um, oh yeah, it's my blue shell. <gasps> oh, wait! <laughs> But there's also, like, um, so, like, at, at, at that point, Mario and DK were, like, you know, they had the synchronized minds of doing that good moment. Then, yeah. the, then, the, then the Koopa blows them up, and as they're falling, they're blaming each other for what just happened. Yeah, guys, like, come on, film, be consistent, please. Donkey Kong blames Mario for whatever reason, and Mario blames Donkey Kong, which, if anything, Mario had more of a, re- more of a reason to blame Donkey Kong because he's the one that fired the missile, should have killed the Koopa, but he, st- he was still alive. So, you know. Yeah. But anyway, um, they fall into the sea. DK gets knocked out by a tire. Mario saves him, and he's like, Did you saved my life. He's like, yeah, don't worry. I won't tell anyone. Good, please don't. Uh, <laughs> and they get eaten by Unai. Good exchange, to be honest. Yeah, a, a good exchange. Um, but they're back to fighting when they're in Unagi's belly. I can ima- I can understand having them continue fighting. But the fact is, there's no resolution to the fighting. No. It just sort of stops happening. But let's go back to that after we deal with Peach. So Peach drives back to the Mushroom Kingdom. She she doesn't stop to check on Mario and Donkey Kong, but she has to go back, which is fair enough. Um, mm. Uses anti grav to get across the water. Not how that works, but whatever. Um, and uh, basically, you know, she 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 warns all the Toads to go into the forest, but her and Toad are ready to confront Bowser, and it's like all this threatening shit. You know, they're ready to face the big evil, and he's just there proposing. And it goes exactly like as you as you'd expect. He uses a pickup line. Peach doesn't react. It's like he goes to Cap, going like, "I told you it was bad." It's like, "Oh, it's fine. <laughs> You're doing great." <laughs> Do you think the movie would have been 
do you think the movie would have been better off if they had waited until that moment for it to be revealed that he's doing it to simp for Peach? That would have been so much funnier. <sighs> like, if the entire rest of the movie he was just talking about destroying shit and taking over, or just, like, practicing for, like, a fight with Mario or something, and then when he lands the, the kingdom and says it, that would have been better, do you think? Yeah. I think, like, the big criticism I would have towards that is that, like, it, it was never built up, but no. I feel like the joke would be funny enough to where I feel like the film wouldn't get away with it. Yeah. Like, maybe you could have a couple hints here and there where oh, people yeah. mention mm -hmm. Peach's name and then he turns his head or something. Yeah, like his eyes light up or something, yeah. Yeah. No, like, direct, like, actual stating that this is why he's doing it, but just, like, subtle hints for future, yeah, yeah. like, rewatches. Because I think it would have been way better if he'd waited until that moment so that we, as the audience, could, you know, have it revealed to us the same way it was... No, yeah, I completely agree. Yeah, that'd be cool. Or, like, maybe the, or like maybe the first hint could have been, like, you know, when Kami gave his report, and instead of, like, asking about, like, what's happened to Mario, like, his first question is just, you know, did she look impressed? Like, yeah. you know, why would he care? Or, like, he gets the bouquet and he asks Kami, do you think Peach would like these or something, and then just puts them away and talks about conquering or something? Or it's like, or it's like, oh, do you think you think girls would like this or something? Kami's like, well... <laughs> But yeah, uh, could have been handled way better. Uh, Peach says no, because of course she would. Of course. Uh, of course. Then he tortures Toad to make yeah. her comply. Um, and you could see in his face, he was ready to kill the Toad. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. That when boy he, was on the verge of death. When he's evil, he's evil, and I like the evil. Um, but like, I also love that like he, he agrees to not harm the Toads, but he'll gladly sacrifice all the Kongs and Luigi in lava, like during the wedding ceremony. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, so uh, then we go to Mario and DK in Unagi's belly. They're back to arguing. The most forced argument I have ever seen in my entire life. Like Cranky says that his dad sees him as a joke. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I mean, you do dance in front of your entire kingdom and look like a total twat. But so, yeah, maybe he should look at you like that. But the problem is, people were cheering him on. They weren't, like, going, like, uh, like, embarrassed or cringing or anything. Only Cranky Kong was cringing. Was cheering and shit, yeah. I guess Donkey Kong just wanted to, like, you know, he was mainly doing it just to impress his dad. And he only wants, like, his dad's approval and shit. But he didn't look upset when Cranky told him to stop. He just looked really into it. Like, he, he didn't, like, you know, it, it, it's not like when Cranky told him to stop. He went, oh, come on, please. Or, like, you know, just like, oh, okay, dad. Oh, you, yeah, I feel like what would have been a lot better is that, like, you know, he's he's acting, like, super cocky and stuff. And then, like, Cranky tells him to stop. He just stops. Yeah. Yeah, and he gets, like, a disgruntled look on his face and turns away from him. Yeah, he just stopped. Like, he, like, looks super fucking embarrassed or something. Yeah, I feel, that would have been way better. If Donkey was there when Peach and Mario were confronting Cranky, like, you know, maybe if Cranky, like, you know, said, like, maybe you'd like to face my son, and Donkey was like, I will wipe the floor with you! And Cranky's like, settle, son, not now. And that's where Donkey was like, okay. Like, that, that could have been a good moment. This little bit of character moment, but again, what can you expect from a Mario movie? Yeah, but, um, and then, uh... You know, then, then Mario says that his dad sees him as a joke, and Donkey Kong is like, yeah, well, your dad's right, you are a joke! And it's like, okay, you, did, did you want to avoid the agreement trope there or something? Yeah, I think they want to keep them as, like, not liking each other, which is fine, I can appreciate doing something different, but it just didn't last long enough. <laughs> just because something is different doesn't mean it's good. Yeah, but then they get out of Unagi's belly because they realize they had one rocket left over. Yeah, very yep. easy to get out of that thing, by the way. Yeah. Like, um, then it cuts to the wedding. Toad is somehow allowed to walk around the castle grounds to give Peach her, her bouquet. Yeah, why? Yeah, I didn't even think about that when I first saw it, but what the fuck? Why was Toad just allowed to go around? Why wasn't he kept prisoner? Why wasn't he thrown in with everybody else? Yeah, why wasn't he put in a cage? And it also goes to show, if they had ice flowers this whole time, why didn't they use them? <laughs> Yeah, like they had them nearby, close enough for Toad to walk one towards and get one. Why didn't she bring some with her? And it also goes to show, yeah, like this, like this also reminds me of a, of a plot point, right? There's like an entire field of fire flowers, right? We have this whole field of we have this whole field of fire flowers. Why don't they use this for the kingdom? Just give all the Toads fucking fire flowers. Why can't you just do that? Make your own army. Give all the Kongs fire flowers. Why didn't you bring any of these power-ups with you? To, to be fair, I would not trust any of the Toads with a power-up like that. Especially not the one that causes fire. At least give the guards <laughs> some fucking flowers, you know? 
Yeah, give the yeah. guards like some power ups at least. You know, like at least a fucking super mushroom to make them bigger. Also, uh, little nitpick: uh, wedding bells. The song used uh, for for like weddings on Earth, exactly the same in the Mushroom Kingdom. That's uh, you know yeah. wrap your head around that one. I mean, yeah, that's but whatever. That's whatever. A uh, little plot point: Luigi was uh, one of the highest of the prisoners, but now he's the lowest when they get sacrificed. Yeah, they changed the position of the chain when they moved them. I guess. I Gotta know. have some tension there. Uh, maybe because may, maybe because they realized that, like you know, before that Luigi was like close to dying, and is like, wait, weren't some other people lower than him? How many deaths did we not see? I will say uh, I do like Ice Peach's design. Um, Hi, Elsa. Yes. Yes, unfortunately. Where's that death battle, huh? And yeah, just uh, Peach absolutely slays in this fucking scene. Takes out the whole fucking army. She only she only loses the power up because she set off King Bob Omb and he exploded before she could throw another ice flower. He just so happened to be there. He was there. He was invited. Yeah. <laughs> Why was King Boo invited? Yeah, that's a good question. The Boos are not part of Bowser's army. Oh, King Boo looked so bad. <laughs> he looks like he's from an older fucking movie that got shoved in there. I feel like he was rendered in an entirely different software. I'm pretty sure they did it. <laughs> I think it's like because the booze aren't part of Bowser's army, they do their own thing. So like, um, you know, based on that logic, they're yeah, the chaotic neutrals of the Mario world. They didn't think to add booze into like the film. But then I guess they wanted booze in that, in like King Boo in that moment is like, we don't really, like, how do we, how do we do the transparent ship? Can we just make the bottle invisible? The booze should have been in that castle Luigi was in at the start. Should have, because, you know, Luigi is scared of ghosts. But yeah, uh, then Mario and DK swoop in and uh, we get uh, another cool little fighting sequence where they're working together um, to defeat yeah. the Goombas and the Koombas. Uh, a sequence I, I did like. Fire Kong is there. Fire DK. That was just thrown at us. Yeah, referencing a possible power up in another game, which is something that a friend of ours fucking tried to make it as a good thing. I'm like, that's literally one step above fucking product placement, dude. I don't want to hear it. Pretty much. Um, although uh, there was like um, a, li a small little conversation between the two uh, when they see the Goombas and the Coopers, and Mario's like, you want to do this? And DK's like, yes, I really do. And then we get one of the worst lines of dialogue in the entire movie, where Donkey Kong literally says, it's on like Donkey Kong, and I want to throw up in my bucket. He says that. I forgot yeah. he says that. I saw that, and I just thought about, you copyrighted the um, the saying for this. Yeah, I completely forgot that was that that, that was a moment. Um, but then Mario gets, Mario gets the Tanuki Leaf, uh, which a lot of people... Um, <laughs> A lot of people genuinely thought a lawsuit was going to happen from Sega because he flies like tails. He spins his tail around like a helicopter. Yeah, and again, we have um, we have a we have a case of Mario's like training with powers being very inconsistent. Yeah, he's he has to train with the super mushroom. He has to train with the Tanuki leaf. The Katsu, nah, he doesn't need any training for that. Well, no, the Tanuki, he like. He, he's not used to the flying. He, ha he takes like a little bit to get used to, yeah. Yeah, he takes a bit to adjust and then he's just uh, automatically used to it. Yeah, he masters it very quickly considering how hard it was just to do the platforming earlier. So then mm -hmm. um, so then Peach is about to get fucked, but then Mario come uh, comes in to help. Yeah, I'll also mention this right now. Peach froze Bowser first before she went on like her yes. tirade with the army. This is important for later. She froze him entirely, like even froze his head. He, he, was, he, was, he was a statue. The uh, spectators yeah. just sat in awe. Then, <laughs> then Donkey Kong uh, rescued the prisoners. So yeah, Luigi was about to fall. Then Mario saves him. They have like a really good like like moment where they're like reuniting and hugging and stuff, which I thought was like really sweet because you know it was like a proper bro moment. Then Bowser, <laughs> Bowser opens his eyes while frozen, sees Peach like not even hug Mario, but basically like you know flicks the like like the brim of his cap in the tanuki suit and he gets fucking enraged so pissed at the fact he sends the bonsai bill to destroy the mushroom kingdom i also love that everybody was celebrating as like guys bowser is right there the fire breathing dragon is right <laughs> there what are you doing i can literally Run. see the ice shaking <laughs> <laughs> are you guys stupid um i hate this in fucking kids movies yeah. i swear so then Mario immediately springs to action and the only reason the Bonsai Bill doesn't destroy the kingdom is because he whacks it in the eye 
Um, something that I'm honestly surprised has not been a thing in the film, in the previous games to begin with. Because, yeah, the bullet bills and the bandit bills are sentient. Like, that is confirmed. Um, but then the bill, but then the bonsai chases Mario through the forest, the same forest that Peach told the Toes to evacuate in. Which I kind of wish there was a moment of like Mario realizing halfway through, like, oh shit, I have to change my course. Ah, the warp pipe. There you go. I also like how when he's going to the warp pipe, it's like, yeah, I'll just take this fucking bonsai bill to Brooklyn. It's fine. I don't know what's even crazy about that is he doesn't. Bye bye, Brooklyn. He doesn't assume that the bill is just going to explode the moment it touches that thing and then kill everybody. Yeah, like it's a, it's like it's ve like Mario got very lucky that like the bonsai bill didn't just explode when it touched, like it did a little fucking ding. To, like the like the flag mast and like why does it go through the pipe like i understand like in the game sometimes like there's like big enemies go through pipes we've seen that before but something of that size hell no don't the pipes grow when that happens too like, don't the pipes get yeah. bigger when a big thing comes out of them mm -hmm. so he had no idea it was going to do that uh the bonsai bill blows up in the fucking like pocket dimension right and sucks everybody in through a wormhole and uh sucks like bowser's kingdom in as well you know well partially not not his whole kingdom just a bit like just the face and yeah. that's it <laughs> They all land in Brooklyn, killing possibly hundreds of people, yeah. I might add. Oh, thousands. That thing was huge. Literally in my notes, it says, you can't convince me that no one died when everything appeared at once from the pipe. Absolutely not. Yeah, so many people just died there and no one questions it. This is never brought up. And the headline at the end of the movie is a plumber beat a dragon. In I real don't... life, in real life, if that happened, it wouldn't be like, oh, guy beat up a turtle. It would be giant island showed up out of nowhere and killed thousands of people. That would, that would be the headline. <laughs> Genocides Brooklyn. Um, but there's also, um, like, after that happened, like, Bowser goes right for Mario. Um, yep. When he, when Mario tried to get to the start. And there's one line in there that still confuses me. I will say, like, uh, before you mention up that point, um, they're trying to get the star and stuff. Peach is like, hey, Mario, catch. Kicks the star way too fucking far away. Why doesn't she use the star? Why didn't she use it? Yeah, why didn't she use yeah. the star? She's been established to use power-ups before. Why didn't she just use it? Yeah. Oh, why? I remember. Because then Mario would have been pointless in his own fucking movie. But yeah, no, Bowser stops him from, from getting the star. And um, as he's beating Mario, like, fucking decimating Mario... A line he says, he says, now you will suffer like me. When the fuck was he ever suffering? If anything, he was in yeah. control for the entire film up until that point. I feel like a flashback to Bowser's childhood should have been put in the movie. I feel like it was in there and got cut out. Maybe Bowser yeah. was a resident of the Mushroom Kingdom, but he got exiled by the previous monarch, but we never see anything <laughs> like that. He has his own fucking army. He destroyed the Ice Kingdom to get the star how was at what point was he so, well because he didn't have a girlfriend i'm telling you he's an incel i hate that they turned bowser into reddit because like that's it's like that's that that line of dialogue and then the line earlier with the piano cover are the only hints we get that he's had some kind of traumatic childhood but they never show it and it's a movie you're supposed to show those kinds of things you've got two flashbacks to baby peach and baby mario Nothing for Bowser, even though you've got this shit going on to try and justify his fucked up behavior. Come on. You literally just like you, what Mar what the Mario film did to Bowser is what is like what Sonic 2 did to Tails. There's just some like there's no flashbacks whatsoever, and we're just supposed to believe that this character has been through shit. It's like, but why? Why? I should know this stuff. But then like fucking then Peach, Donkey Kong, uh, and Toad. They're getting beaten by Bowser in the background while basically the TV is saying to Mario, say Brooklyn. Um, Luigi's in the back. Luigi's like in the trash. Yeah, he hides in a bin because everything's going yeah. to shit. Um, mm -hmm. then, then Peach breaks out of a Koopa's grass, kicks a shell to punt the star away from Bowser towards Mario. Mario's yeah. going to get the star. Bowser spits some fire. Luigi comes out of nowhere, grabs a heavy ass manhole cover and is able to stop the flames to let Mario yep. get the star. Cool moment, but makes no sense. <laughs> yeah, makes no fucking sense. I just gotta say, I don't like bringing realism into cartoons, but the fact that it was beginning to melt, he should not have been able to touch it. At yeah, point. no, he definitely shouldn't. Like, like you could see it was heating up. He, could have, he, he doesn't even go like, ow, 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 He should have had it on the end of a plunger because he's a plumber and then he wouldn't be touching it. Oh, that'd be so funny, yeah. That would actually have been really cute. But yeah, so... Then they both get the star together. Um, a nice. They say 
They say it's just like the games. You can't share power-ups. Why does the star power up both of them? Yeah, why you 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 can't share power-ups, guys. Yeah, you can't you can't split the power up. Yeah, I will say that like they they play like an orchestral remix of uh, the star theme. Really good, very good shit. All right, so what I was thinking was in the games, right? It was um two stars would spawn if there was like two players, right? Okay, I feel like the only defense people would make towards that because like, I'm just remembering, right? It is canon in like the the new Super Mario Brothers games in Wii specifically. If you got an invincibility star and you picked up somebody else, they would get the invincibility as well. Does that imply that Mario picked up Luigi? <laughs> yeah, just off screen, yeah. He's like, hey, he's like, Luigi, wait, 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 come here, come here, come here. When the fire, when the fire, wait, what? when the fire clears, <laughs> like, Mario is just holding Luigi on top of his head. They're both looking dead serious. He's, he's like, he's like holding him like a, he's like holding Luigi like a princess, and Luigi's like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I always imagine them holding him by his butt above his head and like Louis in like a like a sit up position. See now if they did that, that would have been funny. <laughs> that would have been good. I actually, I actually wouldn't have minded that, but um But yeah, um a good finishing sequence, I suppose. Um No, I uh, I've got one thing. You absolutely under no circumstance will ever be able to make the arms to the side with the fingers pointing up look cool. I'm sorry. When you do the arms to either side, like a T pose, and then you stick your fingers up, uh, that's that doesn't look cool. It will never look cool. Oh, the run, the run. Okay. It will never look cool. That that sucked me out of that scene. That that ruined it a little bit. To be honest, I'm not gonna lie. I'll also say that, like, um, again, it goes to show that Mario doesn't really win any of his fights. Like, based off of his own strength and stuff, it's just because he has the right power up at the right time. Uh, also, the jump was very unneeded. Oh, the fucking... Yeah, they do that in the training scene, too, where they just focus on the 8-bit the pose. Come on. I will say, like, there was a thing that, like, um, the one time, like, the film actually called back to, like, earlier scenes was, um, during the time when, um, after Mario fought, like, DK, Peach was going up to him going, like, oh my god, you were so amazing. You really don't know when to quit, do you? Yes. And, and Mario was like, yeah, I just don't know when to quit. And, like, it goes, it like calls back to like the final fight scene between him and Bowser, and Bowser goes, You don't know when to quit, do you? And Mario's like, I've been told that. And yes. <laughs> um, I wish like they said that more to him throughout the stuff, because like that line would have been so much more impactful. Because yeah. his dad doesn't say it to him. No, he doesn't. It would have been so fucking good if his dad said it. Speaking of his dad, in the midst of the fight. Does his dad come back? Yeah, just like in the midst of the fight, he just opens the window. It's like, oh, wow, there's my sons. Why are they all rainbow colored all of a sudden? Wow, they're moving so fast. I'm so proud of them. Why haven't you evacuated your building, you fool? <laughs> Why were you still in the house? The only people we see are his parents and Spike. And Spike is surrounded by, by you know, Bowser's minions. And Luigi clears the and he goes, Hey, Spike! And just runs away to help Mario fight. Cool scene if Spike wasn't, you know, such a fucking one-dimensional character. Yeah. Did, okay, I'm gonna say I did like that they did the Meteor Smash uh, on Bowser. That was cool. I mean, yeah. yeah uh, it was it was a good, like, you know, it was good a, a good team-up of, of the brothers. The problem I have with it is, where does Luigi get the sudden bravery? Oh yeah, the sudden bravery is just a thing, suddenly. Because there was never a moment where he was overcoming his fears, he was still fucking to- He was in a cage! He was about to die! And he's got no context for what power-ups are either, does he? The only thing he knows is that Mario dresses like a Tanuki. Oh yeah, yeah, Luigi has no idea what these power-ups are. Like, I'm, I'm surprised that like, after he got the invincibility star, he didn't just have like a fucking seizure or something, you know? Because <laughs> I think the only time he ever questions the power-ups is like, after they hug and stuff, like, you know, after Mario saves him, he's like, What are you, a bear?! But that's crazy, because he doesn't even know what's a power-up, he just, for all he knows, that's just Mario in an outfit. For all he knows it's just he just he just Mario just came back to him and he came out as a furry and he's like wow I don't respect <laughs> this but cool I'm gone for a day and you're a furry now <laughs> <laughs> what has this world done to you but yeah so that so then after they defeat Bowser and Peach forces force feeds him a mini mushroom that's when everyone is there to chit to like applaud them where the fuck were they before? This also goes to show of um like a big thing about the power ups that you know they should have kept it with the games. It is established in this lore that all you need to do is hit something hard enough and the power will stop. Yes. Bowser only needs to slam into like either the glass jar or his cage hard enough and the power up would be gone. That's a good point. Why doesn't Bowser do this? That, that is an excellent point. <laughs> yeah, I, I listened to like a podcast of someone reviewing um the film, so I'll give him credits to that. So yeah, it was something that I... 
didn't didn't notice at first, but yeah, it's a bit it's a big fucking question mark on why Bowser wouldn't just like you know run head first into like the cage and just get rid of the power up or like slam uh slam the piano on top of him during the post credits. Oh yeah, yeah. You could just throw him the th just throw it up like over his head and just fucking have it slam on him. No, you're, you're overthinking it. Just make him bite himself. So Mario and Luigi are living in the Mushroom Kingdom, but they go to the real world to keep doing their job as plumbers. <laughs> what? Which must be a sure. really fun um commute to and from. Here's my problem with it. There, there's what there, there's a continuity error. Uh, the time is not the same in both the kingdoms. When they when they go to the Mushroom Kingdom, it's daylight, but it was nighttime in in, in Brooklyn. When it's midday in uh, the Mushroom Kingdom during the whole wedding thing, and it's definitely not morning. It's definitely midday at least. Um, it's like 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 the sun's still rising in Brooklyn. So by the time they wake up, it's probably like one p.m. in Brooklyn <laughs> or something. Or or it's not even that. It, it it's probably like three a.m. and they're just going to work really fucking early. But yeah, film ends with them doing all that cool stuff, doing all the cool platforming. That's also that's also when fucking that, that's also when Mr. Blue Sky plays for just like yep. oh, three yeah. seconds. Mm -hmm. And the thing like, is, why? Again, Mr. Blue Sky is a good song. I like Mr. Blue it's Sky. It's one of my favorite songs of all time. But why is it there? It's just not fitting. Um, also, Nihilistic Luma has to um, come back at the very end to just give off like three more jokes about nothing ma nothing mattering and then moving on to the credit scene. And I'm like, I hate you. You are such a worthless addition to this story. You add <laughs> nothing. Stop. Go away. He's a character that's questioning mortality and welcomes death in a children's film, I want to point out. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. Have fun explaining that to your kids, parents. Um, but yeah, we get a lovely credit sequence of all the tracks, of, of like previous game tracks and stuff. Beautifully done. Uh, then we get mid-credit yep. sequence of Peaches, um, which, again, song's still terrible. Um, he gets his own miniature piano for some reason. Yes, before you say yes, before like anybody comments this. Yes, we all hate fun. Shut up. But then we get post credits. Oh yeah. Um, where they sequel bait. Um, yep. You know, it's in the ruined sewers. You see, you see the, a toolkit. There's a Yoshi egg. It cracks, and you just hear Yoshi. Wow, that's that would have been so cool. That would have been so impactful if we didn't fucking see Yoshi's before. Yeah, the fact that we saw the Yoshi's, not even in the film, but in the marketing as well. We already saw them. We Yay. knew they were going to be in this film. Well, personally, I like that ending better when it happened in the first Godzilla movie. <laughs> Fuck you. They DNA yeah, the 98 one for fuck's sake. <laughs> But yeah, so I guess they're either going to make another. They probably are because because this film's already made fucking j trillions. It's a fucking guarantee that we're getting a Nintendo cinematic universe. So get ready for that. I don't oh, think yeah. it's. I don't think it's going to be a cinematic universe. I think it's just going to be, you know, we're just making more Nintendo films. What I feel like is going to be happening now is that now that Mario has become super successful and made like, you know, loads of money overnight. We're now going to move from superhero movies to video game movies, where yep. every IP under the sun is going to make a film to, you know, try to, like, write off of Mario's success. But there's a clear difference between Mario starting off, like, you know, this new trend versus, like, Iron Man starting off this trend. The difference is, Iron Man was good. This film has set a really, really low fucking bar, and the films are just going to be shittier from here. So, have fun, boys. Have fun. I mean, hey, who knows? Maybe we, maybe we might get the Sly Cooper film. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> uh, Tommy, April Fool's Day was ten days ago. <laughs> it Honestly, with everything that's happened in this film, and I can't believe I'm saying this, and Jack knows what I'm going to say. Oh, God, where's this going? It's really <sighs> painful to admit that the Sonic films did a far better job at the references than the Mario what? films. Okay, it's not really Tommy. There's a skinwalker in his house. Someone called the police. You agreed to that, Jack? Yeah, I agree you to agreed that. You agreed to the that? The references are... What's happening right now? Because, look, at least I can say that, like, as much as I don't like the Sonic films, right, I fucking hate Sonic 2 with, like, a passion. I do not like that film by any stretch. But the one thing I will say that Sonic 2 got right 
that the Mario film got wrong, at least Sonic 2 tried to be a movie. Yes. At least it was a film, and it wasn't a fucking cutscene compilation. There was a story going yes, on. There, yes, that's it. There was there a was story. There was an overarching narrative. Yeah, there was that. Sonic and Knuckles grew like people do in real life. They didn't just stay static the whole thing time. thing is, I gave, I gave Sonic 2 flack because some of the references were too over the top. That's what I thought at the mm. time. They were too, like, a bit too in your face. I genuinely didn't think... Which they still are. Yes, but I didn't think they could get worse and the mario film proved that yes they can get worse i'm terrified of what the mario movie is going to do to future video game adaptations are we in for like two decades of just non-stop references and bare bones storylines is that what we're in for now what's going to be funny what's going to be interesting is i think the films of games that have less in them that are less of a series would be better because yeah there's less to reference so it's not so much as hey do you get this do you get this do you get this do you get this it's like hey you might get this but there's an actual story here like if like if say someone was to do because uh, it, it was rumored for a while that there was going to be a klonoa film if they were to do a klonoa film what the fuck are they going to reference you know okay uh, there's there's a little bit of phantom isle there here's hupo now we've got to actually make a film out of this yeah, we're just gonna we're just like gonna reach a stage where like you know the video game films are gonna be bad and like the problem is with like Nintendo doing this is like oh yeah Mario made loads of money so our other stuff is gonna be great right it's like yeah no it's not nobody knows your other IPs as much as they know Mario the only reason why Mario is like such a successful film was because even your fucking grandparents know who Mario is that's the th like. Mario is basically just like video games version Mario. of Jesus. Everybody knows his fucking name and everybody knows what he's like. That's why this film is so successful. Well, he's video game Mickey Mouse. But yeah, yeah, he's exactly like Mickey Mouse. That's the that's the perfect example. Thank you. Like, take like if I was to get like a hundred people in a room and I asked them, I was like, do you know who Mario is? All of them would say yes. If I said, do you know what Metroid is? I'd consider, like, maybe five or ten would say they know what that is. That's being generous. Yeah, that's being very generous. Like, that's the big issue with Nintendo properties. And I feel like I'm just worried because everyone I see talking about this movie is praising it to no end. And it's... The Mario film deserves some praise. Some of the things... it you know, an Animation? Gorgeous. Music? Fantastic. Voice acting? Brilliant. Story? No. Trash. Characters. Trash. Get ready. Get ready for the next Nintendo Direct because they're going to announce Super Mario Brothers, the movie, the video game. And oh. the cutscenes are just the scenes from the film. Perfectly no. cut where levels are going to be. But they're going to be compressed and not as good. Oh, that's yeah. the, that's why it took so long. They're going to they're gonna make it an actual game. Oh, it has been a while since Mario had a game too. Oh, fuck. You might be right. I've also said, um, I said this to, I, don't, I, I can't remember if I, if I said this to any of you guys, but um, I also think the Mario film might be in the future Mario Kart 8 DLC. I think it's going to be a three segment. It's going to start at the Mushroom Kingdom. Then it's going to go to the... Co no, 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 it's going to start at the Kong Island, then Rainbow Road, then it's going to finish in the Mushroom Kingdom. If it's a good course, it's a good course. You know, they can milk the shit out of this movie. I also, um, I did a tweet about this, and if it happens, honest to God, uh, I I'm going to call myself clairvoyant. Um, I will find it really funny if they do release this film on a cartridge for the Switch. Watch it cost 60 bucks. I was about to say, watch it cost 60 quid. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be, I'll be like, guys, really? <laughs> nah, but it comes with an exclusive animated short. Oh. So, closing thoughts. I'm not against future Nintendo films, because I want to see them try with other series. I want to see a Star Fox film and stuff like that. But, Jesus Christ, I hope they are listening to the negative reviews, and I hope they actually make a better film next time. I, I want them to learn the right lessons from this movie, and not just keep doing the same thing over and over like if they do a donkey kong movie i don't just want like reference after reference i don't want donkey kong's first line of dialogue to be banana slammer you know i don't want all that stupid i, I just i want them to be good man I, I don't know what i basically want nintendo to do from now on is that i want them to start making films and you know respect the art of filmmaking because 
video game storytelling and film storytelling are two very different things that are very, very easy to get wrong if you don't know what you're doing. Respect the way films are made, and your films are going to be objectively better. And if you do, like, do the whole, like, oh, we're gonna do something with Zelda, we're gonna do something with Metroid, um... Yeah, just commit to the bit. I don't want to hear any of- I don't want to hear any self-aware jokes. Just commit to the bit. There's nothing wrong with just, you know, you know, in, like, I don't know, being cringe but free, I guess you could say. You don't need to go like, oh, why do I have an arm cannon? <laughs> just fucking do it. Just do it and stop. Alright, I think what the movie is good for is like being very recognizable for, um, for, you know, for a more general audience. You know, like, anyone watching you'd be like, oh yeah, I know this. But the problem is, where there's no real movie going on here. So if they are going to go forward with this, with these different movies and like different universes and tie them all together in this big Super Smash Bros. style bullshit, right? You need a movie. You need some... You need some base to go on to... to... You need at least, like, a tiny thread of a plot to, yeah. like, bring everything together and not just have, like, have everything in the plot just be super convenient because you want to get to the next big action piece. Because that's not good storytelling. It never has and it never will. And you can show references if you want to, but, like, there's a way of doing it. I think that it, when you're doing an adaptation of something as big as Mario, the... The temptation to just do member berries is very hard to resist, and they clearly didn't uh, resist it. It's inevitable that it was going to happen. I and you know, like, I was I was ready that there were going to be references. Thing is, there's there's a point where the references are fine to where it becomes too much. Like, I think stuff yeah, in the 100%. background is fine. Because that's not, you know, it's like, hey, you know, little background thing, you know, if there's an R wing in Mario's room or if there's like an arcade cabinet called Jumpman, that's fine. Because it's not, it, it, you know, it, it, it's, it's it, not in your face. Yeah, it, yeah. It's the animators having fun. Because, you know, it's not it's not like a thing that drives the plot forward. It's something you see and it's like, huh, I know that. Yeah. When it's if it's in the music, kind of pushing it, but that's still fine. It's possible. Yeah, music is music. That's when fine. It's driving the plot. That's the problem. When it's literally a case of, you know, something that the viewers, you know, the casual viewers won't get, but the hardcore fans know, that is when it becomes the 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 big problem about it it's you know like Mar like they can only get there through carts you know what are these carts specific design why is toad why is toad's car got monster trucks you know the fans know because you can have that as a car option in mario kart a but you know the casual people are just going to be like why did the mushroom man want monster truck wheels you know why can why can the cars go like anti-gravity like what why why are they doing that like that's something that we're seeing because that is moving the plot forward and no and you know no one questions it that, that that's also a thing when, when the references aren't questioned by the characters in the films themselves that's when it is also more of a problem because like they're because they're e e even they're like eh, this this thing's normal right like they might, they, they might as well be winking to the camera it's it's a shame where i can see the mario film and it's like the more i think about the film the worse it gets <laughs> thing is the only reason i give the film a five out of ten and this is going to sound weird to you guys but i judge a film like you know no shit i judge a film based on my enjoyment if i'm checking the time that's when i'm not enjoying the film if I'm checking the yeah, time, it's lower. It's lower than 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 a five out of ten. If I'm like, you know, mm -hmm. if, if I'm moving my mouse to see how long the film's left, I'm not having a good time because I didn't do that. That's why it's mid. If it, if I was checking my watch, it's a four or three out of ten. Well, I mean, yeah, of course you weren't checking your watch because the film just kept throwing shit at you with the fucking speed of whiplash, like. You blinked and you missed. It's not even even during the second viewing. I I wasn't bored. Like like. But I was just sat in my chair, just like thinking, right, okay. Like even during dur during the first watch, like there were moments I was just not having a good time. Like Bowser singing Peaches and, and stuff like that. Like I, I want to point something out though, and I think it's worth thinking about this because it does show just how much of a state video game movies can actually be yeah. in. Mm -hmm. uh, this is going to be the highest grossing video game movie That's, ever made. There's no doubt. Then. But you know what the highest grossing movie is right now? The Warcraft movie. 
And that has problems too, because whereas the Mario movie has too many references and not enough story, the Warcraft movie has too much story and also has too many references. So what's going to end up happening is the two highest grossing video game movies ever made are going to be chock full of references and have either not enough story or too much. So there's going to be a very weird divide. There's no nice in between, yeah. Also, poor Dungeons and Dragons. Like, that came out like <laughs> a few days before Mario came out. Yeah, it's a shame because every single person who I've seen, who I've heard that saw the film absolutely loved it. Yeah, it's getting nines across the board. What the hell? It's Dungeons and Dragons. Like every, like even people who like, like people who like are, are obsessed with D&D fucking loved the movie. I still, I, I, I need to go watch it. I, I'm excited for it, to be honest. I was, I, I was impartial to it before, but like now that I'm seeing all the reviews, I'm like, okay. This sounds cool. The best part is, right? The best part is, is that my my cinema, it occasionally reshows old films. Like films, it still has the, the reels of and they still have the license to, to, uh, to show, right? At the same time of the launch day of the Mario film, it was reshowing Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. And as a joke, I said to my brother, why don't we watch that instead? And after the film, after the Mario film ended, I thought, I really wish I just watched Puss in Boots again. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. Like, no yeah, shot. Sure. Like, so, the best part is, it's last showing on Thursday. I'm just probably going to go watch Puss in Boots again just to give myself a panic cleanser. <laughs> you want to talk about fucking good villains in movies? Death could destroy Bowser. Not even just, like, ability-wise, just, like, in terms of character. Oh, yeah. No, for, um, for definite, yeah. So, um, unless there's anything to add, I think we're ready to end the podcast. There we go. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Um, hope maybe we'll see you in the next time whenever we do this. I think it's probably just going to be Sonic 3, isn't it, at that point? Sonic 3 the, or... Or the Knuckles show. Uh, well, the, nah, I don't know. Nah, whatever. nah. We'll, 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 we'll whatever only do next films movie we unanimously agree on <laughs> to do a podcast on. Oh, this is never happening again. Me and Tommy will never agree this much again. Oh, no, but... <laughs> Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> if my skin is crawling. It just feels weird. I don't know. Well, man. that's all we got to <laughs> say. Other than subscribe. See you later. Thank you guys so much for watching. He's Galactic Cuisine. He's Manga Writer. He's System 509. And I'm Sergeant Major Mario saying ciao. Bye. Goodbye. See ya.